You're watching Capital One Bowl Media. Boise State, ranked 25th in the country and champions of the Mountain West, taking the field at Sam Boyd Stadium in the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania and waiting on the other side at Apple Green Unis. Mario Cristobal's Oregon Ducks. Cristobal just got the job a little over a week ago. He leads Oregon in as head coach for the first time. Glad to have you with us here in Las Vegas for the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl. Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreet here. Great matchup. They've only played twice, both memorable and both Boise wins. What are you expecting to see in this matchup today? I'm excited that we got a bowl game, and we're yeah. going to have two teams that have something to try to go out and prove. Boise State, anytime they go up against a Power Five, it's go time, and everybody's excited to have that opportunity. And for Oregon, Willie Taggart leaves to go to Florida State. Mario Cristobal is now their new coach. Plenty of incentive for Oregon as well to go out there and try to get a fresh start with a new coach. The players started a petition to get Mario Cristobal named head coach. Mm -hmm. They were successful, and he's with Molly McGrath. Thank you, Reese. Coach, this past week has been a whirlwind. What did you say before the game to refocus your team? There wasn't much that had to be said. These guys were dialed in. They've been through a lot, but they've handled it the right way. They're hungry. They want to be aggressive. They want to play with confidence. And you know what? We've given that ability by the way we prepared all week. So these guys are ready to go. What will you miss most without Royce Freeman out there? Well, he's a powerful guy. Obviously, he's a game changer. But we've got some other guys. who are going to do a great job. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Molly and Mario, thank you. And as Molly alluded to, Royce Freeman, the star running back for Oregon, the top running back in Oregon history, will not play in this game. Protecting his draft status when you include bowl yardage, he's seventh all time in career rushing. We're underway. Boise State won the toss and deferred, so they'll kick it off. Goes into the end zone. And the Ducks will start on their 25 behind their star quarterback, Justin Herbert. And when he's been in the lineup, Kirk, this offense has been as dangerous and powerful as any in the country. No doubt about it. 6'6", 225 pounds. The arm talent throws a very accurate ball. He plays with confidence. And I think his team feeds off of that confidence. I think that'll be a big key today. I can't wait to see how Oregon attacks. Willie Taggart called the plays for this Oregon offense. Mario Cristobal and this offensive staff, is, they've had a little bit of time here to put their game plan together, build it around Herbert's skill set. Do they continue to fight and battle the way they have all year when he's been in there, or do they get a little bit more physical because of Mario Cristobal and his ability loves to run the football? There is Herbert, who is a dual threat guy. He missed five games with a broken collarbone, and already flags are flying. Delay a game. Oh, they caught a timeout, timeout just before Oregon. it. Their first, 30 seconds. So a rather inauspicious start to the Mario Cristobal era, I would say at least offensively. As they use a timeout immediately. And we talked about Justin Herbert. He missed five games after breaking a collarbone against California. But look what they did with him. Six and one with him. One and four without him. Look at this. I've never seen anything like that. 50 points when he's in the lineup. 13 points when he's not in the lineup. 550 yards of offense. I mean, you imagine what kind of year Willie Taggart in Oregon could have had if number 10 was healthy all year? And just in terms of the scoring, that would have led the nation just in the games that Herbert played. Without Freeman back there, Kanai Benoit gets the start. He is beside Herbert in the backfield. Quick pass immediately and completed out to Dylan Mitchell, and Mitchell's going to get five. And this is a key right here, Kirk. Boise State doesn't want to play on the edges against Oregon with the speed advantage the Ducks have. Yeah, their, their coaches must have said leverage on the ball and, and getting outside against that perimeter 20, 20 to 30 times this week in talking to us. They know that they've got to protect the edges. Fly sweep, one of the fastest guys, a young player, Jalen Red, a freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, California, is up close to the first down. Looks like they're going to spot him about half yard short. That's what that's what makes this offense so tough is they have so many quick players and they do a good job of getting the ball to the perimeter so quickly. You have to respect it. And when you do that, it opens up the inside run game. There is the inside run game, and nothing doing in there for Benoit. I don't think Benoit got back to the line of scrimmage, and Boise behind the Mountain West Player of the Year on defense, Leighton Vander Esch making the stop. Got to love to watch this defensive line. They're undersized. It's going to be a battle for them when they go up against a bigger offensive line with that middle linebacker, v Vander Esch. They always have a chance in those short yardage situations. That time, he's able to, the line took up most of those offensive linemen and freed Vander Esch to be able to Get up there and make that play on third and short. 
Ducks need to be careful here. They have not been very good in net punting. Had a couple taken back for touchdowns, and this guy, Avery Williams, is dangerous. And had he been able to slip away from Brendan Schooler, he might have had some room to run with a short return for the starting cornerback, who's also the punt returner. Now, here comes the Boise State offense, led by Brett Rippon. Rippon got off to a really slow start this season, Kirk. They did a little two-quarterback system, and we'll see Montel Cozart yeah. the quarterback as well, but it really affected Rippon early until he turned it around mid -season. Well, he's a junior. You see the experience, the big key, the command of the offense. Has to throw the ball in rhythm, has to get back, be able to make quick decisions to get the ball out accurately today against this athletic Oregon defense. Throwing a little screen to Ryan Wolpen. Wolpen gets a first down and is across the 45. That's a nice way to just settle into the game. Boise State historically plays with a chip on their shoulder no matter who they're playing, but especially when they play a team from the Pac-12. It's a nice job of just not getting in a hurry. You know, it's the first pass. He waited, waited for the play to develop, didn't give it away, didn't tip his hand, and then just dumped it down to his back, Wolpen, and picked up big yards for that first down. There is Cozart. We'll see plenty of him. Special packages. He and Rippon will both be in the game at the same time. Wolpen has the ball for the second time, and he's just ripping through the Duck defense for another first down. Wolpen getting the start today, though we do expect to see regular starter Alexander Madison, who injured an ankle in the Mountain West Championship game against Fresno State. Zach Hill, the offensive coordinator, has got to love to see this because they need to be able to be physical against Oregon's all a defensive front. They've got to be able to run the ball, which will set up their play-action opportunities where they can take some shots to Cedric Wilson, number one, downfield. Rippin, quick pass to one of the tight ends, Alec Danins. Danins, veteran guy, Fullerton, Idaho. But Rippin, guy that struggled early in the year with his confidence. They're breaking in basically essentially four new offensive linemen. They're breaking in. They lost three of their top receivers. They lost Jerry Mc, Jeremy McNichols last year, their top back. And there's a lot of new faces around him, not to mention the Kozar transferred in out of Kansas. And he just, I think he was looking for confidence early. Another back that we... They're very high on Robert Mahone getting a carry, but Jalen Jelt, who's been one of the better defensive linemen, not only in the Pac-12, but in the country, maybe underappreciated, as a tackle for loss. Watch him just use his hand to get off of the block. I mean, that, this is textbook. It's what he's done all year. He's so long. I mean, he's 6'6", 245 pounds, and you always hear about defensive linemen, how good of hands do they have? That's why you need to have good hands, to be able to extend yourself, get off of a block, and then be able to get in the backfield and make a play. That was perfect. What Harson and the offensive staff have on third down, they need three. Quick pass to Wilson. It's complete. Cedric Wilson, their most dangerous receiver, makes the catch and moves the sticks. I love how Zach Hill decides to move him around. It's a third down. He's an inside receiver. And he's got a big safety in Tyree Robinson at 6'4", trying to stay with him. That's going to be a big key today is how Cedric Wilson, by far, by far, their go-to receiver, he'll line up into the boundary the way he is now, but they move him around, and they did a great job there on third down, moving him to the inside to get that matchup. Rippin looking for Wilson again, and Wilson can't hold on. <laughs> I just, I love Boise's offense. I, I just love how they keep you on your toes. That time they roll right, trying to think, make that defense on the backside fall asleep. And Springs, who's lined up against Wilson that time, he'll fall for that double move. They lulled him to sleep. Wilson actually beat him, just not able to put that ball in there for Rippin. Brian Harson in his fourth season as head coach at Boise State. Played quarterback there, spent a decade there as an assistant coach before leaving to go to Texas. Was a head coach for a year at Arkansas State as we have another penalty. Offside, defense, number 57, five-yard penalty, second down. Adam Savoy, our referee today, our crew from the American Athletic Conference. Getting a little trip to Vegas as a reward for their season in the American. It's Montel Cozart has checked in, and this is the type of area getting close to the red zone that they like to use Cozart is more of a running threat than ripping. You see them move those tight ends in tandem to the right side. The touch to Wilson. 
Wilson's got the corner. Wilson trying to stay in bounds, but he steps out inside the 15. And there's another little wrinkle. Yeah, and, and when they when they rotate their tight ends over, you, you alluded to that before the snap, they're almost telling you what they're gonna do. But you're, you're out man. They have more blockers there than you have bodies. That's part of trying to defend this offense is you get a lot of window dressing, a lot of pre-snap movement, which can ultimately affect the communication of the defense. Oregon that time outflanked, and with the speed of Wilson, they easily get to the corner. Cozart Kirk stays in at quarterback, and Alexander Madison's now in at running back. Cozart at one-on-one -on, -one on the other side, and this time Springs does a really good job in jamming up Wilson and keeping him from getting to the fade. That was really good coverage there by Springs. Here is Montel Cozart, who started his career at Kansas, threw for nearly 2,800 yards in his Kansas career, but was looking for some place to, to win. Yeah, and we know that he can run the ball, but he can throw it too. He's got great versatility. When he gets in there, the scouting report for Oregon says he's going to run the ball. He's going to run the ball, but you'll be quickly you're going to find out that he can throw it, and if you get lo loaded up against the run game, he'll make you pay for it. Rippin back at quarterback. Now Rippin throwing to the outside, and he overshot his intended man. Sean Monster was out there. He was being covered by Uguchuku Amadi. Jim Levitt, the defensive coordinator from Oregon, taking a chance there, bringing some pressure. Forced Rippin to throw that ball maybe before he was ready. This is where if I'm Boise State, I'm trying to find a way to get Cedric Wilson in a matchup that I like. He's all the way down at the bottom against the freshman, Graham. Very talented freshman at that, but Wilson, Rippon hasn't looked his way yet. Instead, he throws it over the middle. Modster makes the catch. and get him down around the five, but he needed to get to the four. So he got a yard to go. Bowl game, what are you doing? Go for it, right? You say I go see for it. it. I see no movement on the blue sideline. I think they're going for it. Well, what else would you expect from Boise State in the postseason? Exactly. Right? The only thing is they're going to do the old Statue of Liberty play, right? <laughs> it's a little early for a post-Statue of Liberty touchdown proposal for the girlfriend. Boise State has not been good on fourth down, just two of 16. Oh. On the boot, in the middle, it's complete to the tight end. The stop just short of the goal line is Alec Danins. But Danis does have the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Broncos. I think Alexander Madison went the wrong way here in the backfield. They were fortunate to watch him. He goes one way, the quarterback goes yeah. the other. They're fortunate here that the experience of Rippon, he doesn't panic or give up on the play. Eventually finds his tight end, and they pick up that first down on fourth down. Uh-oh, quick huddle. Alexander hasn't been able to practice, so maybe that's part of it. Now, look, everybody's out to the right. Only Rippon back there. Now they'll move him back and try to get Oregon confused. Wolpens at running back. He has it. Wolpen is stopped short. He had the game-winning touchdown in the Mountain West Championship game against Fresno State, second and goal coming. Austin Valley was in there to plug it up in the middle. Big Jordan Scott, the freshman from Largo, Florida. You'll see him in the middle of that defensive front as well, number 34. Probably a pretty area, good job against probably, the run this probably year. Probably the area that they've improved the most defensively is, is being more physical up front at that line of scrimmage. Oh. Uh -huh. Now put him in the spin cycle, flip it out to Wolfen, and he tumbles into the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. I don't, I don't, was that style points? I mean, it didn't really do anything. It was just like a, we have to live up to our reputation almost. Free snap. All four guys just kind of flip around and then they get the ball out to the receivers again. You know, I don't, I don't know what this is. Try to. Here we go. Here we go. It's Vegas, baby. A little showbiz, a little entertainment, sweetheart. A little pirouette. LC would have loved that. Oh yeah. That one was for you, Lee Corso. Entertainment time and Wolfen. Highly entertained by scoring, and Boise State has jumped on top of Oregon 7 0. Welcome to the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, by Sean Lynch.
What an effort. Touchdown. Carr thrown to the end zone for Adams. Shaw was all over him, and Adams beats him for the score. Going to try it. He's got it. Record time. Donnell Humphrey smashes the record. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That oft-repeated phrase might not be true today. Elvis is in the building. Boise State just finished off 13 plays, 67-yard drive, ate up more than five minutes. Broncos trying to beat a Power 5 opponent for the first time this year and dating to the bowl game loss to Baylor last year. They've lost their last three, but an impressive opening drive for them after keeping Oregon from getting a first down. Boise kicks off for the second time today. And for the second time, we'll have a touchback as we go down to the field in Molly McGrath. Well, Reese, Royce Freeman immediately went to running back Tony Brooks James after Oregon's first drive. He gave him an advice and has been in the ear of all the offensive players so far. And before the game, he even got in the middle of the team huddle and gave encouragement and a speech to the team. And Justin Herbert told me if they can't have him on the field, they need his leadership and his coaching on the sideline. They've at least had that so far. Molly, thank you find it a little unusual, frankly, that uh, after making the decision not to play, which is certainly well within his rights, if that's what he wants to do, that taking that kind of role at the moment. And at least it appears that the Ducks responding okay. His replacement, Kanai Benoit, runs through a yeah. sea of flags. Cam McCormick, the tight end there, hooked a Boise State defender. That's holding every flag offense. on the field the came in four. on that one. Ten yard penalty. First down. You know, Oregon wants to be able to talk about Oregon. You take a Herbert throwing the ball. See the tight end right there? He just hooks him. Good quickness by Boise State, by the way, trying to get into that backfield. Caused that hole. But you think of Oregon, you think of these pretty uniforms, and they're going to spread you out, and they're going to throw. They actually, they can run the ball. I mean, they can, they, that could become a strength of theirs, especially behind the big left tackle, Crosby. Jalen Red coming in motion, but they'll... Give right. it inside and nothing doing in there as Ben Wise hit before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. If you love middle linebacker mm -hmm. play, you're going to love 38 in blue. Vanderish has done it all year. He's the player of the year in the conference. Watch how quick he reads this. And the linemen don't have a chance to climb to that second level. You saw the center, Hanson. He wanted to get up there, but he couldn't. Herbert got company in the backfield. And Dustin just has to throw it away. Vanderish was... Providing the pressure as well. 6'4, 240 pounds. Mountain West Conference player, the defensive player of the year. He's the MVP in the championship game. They blitzed him as well. That time he got after Herbert, forced him to throw the football. You don't see middle, many middle linebackers. It's 6'4, 240. Former walk on, played eight man high school football in Salmon River, Idaho, and now he's going to have a decision to make after this game. <laughs> about whether he's going pro and this is another guy who's had a really good season Keikoa Nawahine with a form tackle on Ben Wine and I was treated rather rudely on that series and Ducks will be punting again great awareness the preparation in these first two series by Boise State has been incredibly evident Nawahine that time being able to read that quickly again 6'2 200 pound safety plays like a linebacker up in the box and two series for Oregon's offense without Willie Taggart, and they're off the field twice in three plays. Pressure coming on the punt. Oregon's had one blocked for a touchdown this year. Stanford did it, but they did force a fair catch from Avery Williams. But good field position for the Broncos when you come back. The Las Vegas Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. And Nissan, innovation that excites. Just a normal night in Vegas. You got to get those Skittles up with a straw if you can. Fans and cheerleaders, mascots, fans enjoying the Fremont Street Experience pep rally last night here in Vegas. They've done a great job here as they always do a spectacular afternoon for the game here in Las Vegas and both teams had a had a really good time with the various activities here but so far at least hey, you know we're early a little over halfway through the first quarter but only Boise State appears to be having fun now. We're in Vegas and after a 13 play touchdown drive to open up the game Boise almost feels like they're playing with house money. 
wouldn't be surprised to see a gadget play on this drive just to try to remind Oregon that they, you know, that, that last pretty conventional, the last drive, the 13 plays, other than the pirouette. The pirouette, window yeah. dress, but that was just window dressing, yeah. really, just a, a backward pass. Rippon wants to take a shot, and he does, but he has to throw it between a couple of duck defenders looking for Cedric Wilson back there, but Oregon not fooled. Ugo Amadi and Springs Amadi, both in coverage. You know, Amadi's a safety, but he has corner background, so they put him in that slot, even against a talented receiver like Cedric Wilson, and they, they're confident that he can stay with him. It's a much better matchup for Oregon than Tyree Robinson, who's more of a traditional safety at 6'4". Wilson, you might recognize the name. His dad, Cedric, was the Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, international champion with Philip Fulmer at Tennessee. Second down and 10. Rippon's got a man out there. It's Monster in the secondary. He's inside the 20 before he's finally dragged down by Amadi, and Boise State's in business again. Well, Monster's a guy that got better as the season went on, but this really starts with Rippon in the offensive line. Look at the amount of time that he has to be able to come off his first read. He goes to the second read and eventually makes the throw, and they leave the middle of the field open. It was the matchup that we just talked about. Amadi is a safety, has corner ability, but when you give a quarterback with Rippon's ability to make accurate throws that much time, you're going to pay for it. 50-yard pickup to offset a 51-yard punt, and now Wolpen is knifing his way down close to the 10. Man, Brian Harson, the head coach, who has an offensive coordinator background, and Zach Hill, who is running this offense, they, they could not have drawn up this any better back in Boise. And bring it into quarterback Cozart down in this red zone area. Everything that they hoped for in these first couple drives is coming to fruition for this offense. Mixing up the looks, keeping Oregon guessing, executing flawlessly. Cedric Wilson is back to take the snap, and they do a little double handoff. Wolpen has it, and he's cut down, but not before he gets inside the five. Like I said, I mean, it, 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 you're anticipating, okay, Cozart's in, he's going to take the snap, and instead, they put the receiver in there to be able to take the snap, and you got great blocks downfield. You know, Wolpen isn't necessarily known as their go-to guy, but with Madison not at 100%, he's going to go in there and give you everything that he has, kind of that quintessential Boise State player. Transfer from Northern Colorado. Tough guy, they say he only knows one speed. That 100% 100 miles an hour will go right into the teeth of the Oregon defense. And he's second down and goal. You know, watch Cedric Wilson after he hands the ball off. He's going to lead it around as a receiver. Boom, picks up a great block right there. Another block by Bates. Rippon took the snap. Gave it to Wolpen in Oregon. Stands tough inside. It'll be third down and goal. Boy, it's tough. You know, inside that five-yard line, it's been tough sledding for Boise. See if they try to get to the perimeter here. They keep ripping in the lineup. Boise State's been pretty good in goal-to-go -go situations this year, scoring touchdowns about 84% of the time. That's top 25 in the country. Mahone, the redshirt freshman, now at running back. Rippon wants to throw instead. Rippon throwing it into traffic, and it's intercepted. Arian Springs, a very poor decision by Rippon. And it's a turnover in the red zone, and maybe that'll give the Ducks a little life. Springs does a good job of fooling Rippon. Rippon thought that Springs was sitting with the receiver to the outside. So he really took a chance by throwing this football early, anticipating he would stay to the outside. But as he, look, watch the receiver goes out of the flat. He thinks he's on him, then he comes off of him, reads the quarterback size, goes up and makes a one-handed interception. This interception by Springs. Pistoni's right here. He's gonna slide out into the flat. And Springs is on him right there. And right here, you're going to see that Springs is actually going to come off and make the play. That's who fools him. He's trying to throw out into the corner. Springs comes off of his man and then goes up and makes the play. Completely surprising Brett Rippin. But I don't even know if Bates was open to begin with. I think he was he's covered pretty well. Yeah, I'm not sure he did. Sort of looped it into the 
back of the end zone. And now Oregon, with more penalty yards than total yards of offense, goes back to work. Herbert going to try to get the arm loose. Finds a little running room up the middle. And Justin slips through one tackle and picks up about seven as we check in with Molly. Reese, you mentioned 17 pass breakups for Springs this season. Zero interceptions. You could tell he was really relieved after that. Everyone gave him a lot of love. Royce Freeman coming up to him saying, it is about time. What did I tell you? <laughs> Herbert fires complete. First down for the Ducks. Dylan Mitchell making the catch. Those 17 passes defended that Molly mentioned led the Pac-12, but he hadn't caught one, intercepted one since 2015. If you're an Oregon fan, you, you got to like to see a couple things. You, you, a couple conversions and then the tempo. When Oregon's going, they've got their tempo going. And that, that the first couple of plays, we really hadn't seen much of that because they haven't had a chance to get a first down. But their first couple first downs, right away, Herbert's back up to the line of scrimmage, trying to get Boise State a little bit more on their heels. But for all the fanfare of Justin Herbert and all the talk about Oregon and how they throw the ball, they're not very gifted at wide receiver. Their, their, their bread and butter has been running the football. They spread you out to run the ball. And I've been surprised they've really been trying to throw here as much as they have. They don't necessarily have the really big target. A lot of speedy, shifty guys at receiver, certainly guys can run, including that guy in the backfield. And Tony Brooks-James didn't hold on to it. The ball's loose. Let's see if they're going to call it a catch and say he never held on to it. The officials are saying fumble and giving Boise the ball, but I'm sure they'll look at it again. You know who's in the middle of it. Leighton Vanderess. Puts the guy. Smart thing for the officials. Allowed it to be a catch and it could be considered a fumble. They can always review it. And there's Vanderish. Again, that big middle linebacker in space against the quickest Oregon running back. Closes that gap, that space that he had to defend there. And then technically is perfect in trying to make that tackle and pops the ball out. So far, they're not reviewing this. Well, we will. We'll have a look. Vanderish is right on him. It looked like a catch. He held on to it. And another forced turnover. A Boise team that only forced nine last year now gets its 23rd this season. They've changed it. Here's some trickery. Cedric Wilson, who's never thrown an incomplete pass off a trick play at Boise. He was four for four. Looked for somebody, didn't have it, we, and pulled we it keep down. Waiting. We keep waiting for that Boise State play, and that was it. That was If Oregon wouldn't have stayed back, that would have been where Kozar throws the ball out there to Wilson. And Wilson, because it was a lateral, he's looking right away to throw downfield. But Oregon, nice job of staying back and staying disciplined there on defense. Look, turnovers. It loomed large. Oregon came up with one to stop a threat. Mario Cristobal trying to get the offense rolling. Rippin throws it down the middle. Wilson is knocked down quickly as Troy Dye making the tackle as we check in with Kevin DeGandhi in the studio. Reese, thank you. Studio update brought to you by Great Clips, and it's the defense. You got it in your game. We got a red zone turnover as well. RNL carriers New Orleans Bowl. North Texas picked off by Adarius Wesley. Troy in control early in the fourth, up by 20. Back to you guys. A little different area of the field with soft tosses into the end zone. The recipe for trouble. <laughs> up in an hour game, and in this one, this one's on the money. Wilson's on his way. Rip into Wilson. Cedric Wilson, touchdown. Absolutely perfect job here by Boise State. Set up a rub route by Daynez. Big tight end right here. Watch him work to the middle. And he's almost about to size up the Oregon defender that's running with Cedric Wilson. He's, he gets in just enough to have to get him off of his ability to stay with the receiver. And he just couldn't stay with him. But a nice crossing route. Kind of a rub. If you're a defensive player, you call it an illegal pick. <laughs> Hey, that's exactly what Brian Harse and Zach Hill said they had to do to get guys open. They wanted to be creative. They got tough, made the turnover, and then Wilson paid it off with the touchdown catch. 14 zip points. Capital One Bowl Mania continues tonight on ESPN. Middle Tennessee taking on Arkansas State in the Raycon Media Camellia Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. You can see all of these bowl games streaming live 
on the ESPN app. Brian Harson, of course, the former coach at Arkansas State. That's where he got his first head coaching job, was there for a year before the Boise State job opened. And a good way to keep those dangerous return men from Oregon busy is make sure they have to kneel in the end zone. They'll have it on the 25th. In the pregame, Royce Freeman, who is healthy and has had an incredible career as an Oregon running back, one of the best to ever play for Oregon, he got in the middle of the Oregon team to rally the troops to get them ready for this bowl game. I, you know, and Oregon may come back and win this game, but the way they've started, I don't know necessarily if that's a great recipe for a winning opportunity to have a guy that's healthy who's skipping a bowl game because he's he's getting ready for the uh, the draft to be out there kind of and he's doing his best to help provide some leadership but head coach leaves new coach is in and you got a guy that's healthy that's not playing in a bowl game that's trying to get his team fired up I mean I if I were a senior I'd probably say hey man we love you but go over on the sideline you know let, let us let us get the team ready it's been a tumultuous few days for Oregon, for sure. It was an emotional departure for both Willie Taggart. And look, it, it wasn't all seashells and balloons from the Oregon players either. Many were really upset with Taggart for the way it was handled, and they wanted Cristobal, but they haven't exactly come out. And another football on the ground, and Boise's all over it if they can corral it. And Boise State has knocked another one loose, and Tyson Maeva scooped it up, and the Broncos are threatening to turn this into a blowout. As I studied film one of this week, one of the guys that just stood out to me was his true freshman, Kaniho. 28, he's a nickelback. He's 5'10 and 175 pounds. And they blitz him here, and he gets to the quarterback. Herbert, not just no awareness to feel that pressure and the undersized nickel gets in there and again knocks the ball loose wouldn't surprise me at all to see Boise go right to the end zone to Cedric Urban who's at the top one-on-one -on -one. no safety behind to help him out take a shot the 17th forced fumble and they've recovered 11 of them they've just been swarming Madison's in the game and instead they just Go straight ahead for a yard. That's, that was an area that was really a, a problem for Boise last year. They only recovered two fumbles. Mm -hmm. The turnover margin was minus nine. They were one of the worst in the country this year. Much, much better. Not only today, it gets them up to plus 14 on the year, top 10 in the country. But it's just a different a different energy. And, and, and I think this young deep, every, every player on that defense returns next year for Boise State. It's a young group. It is, it is amazing to look at the number of guys that they have returning. They flop tight end in the H back again. Now motion going that way. And they'll give it on the fly sweep and a chance to throw for Cedric Wilson. And just, I, I must have jinked him a moment ago. <laughs> yeah. He'd been four for four throwing. But he wins the crossbar challenge a lot with the quarterback. Yeah. They'll go out there and throw at the crossbar. And I, Cedric, who's a really good high school quarterback, can throw it. Six seconds remaining in this first quarter. I'm telling you, th th this is a huge play. Maybe it ends up being a sequence of plays. Boise State potentially going for a knockout shot here in the first quarter. Oregon's defense has got to step up. This feels like one of those bowl games where one team wants to be here and the other one doesn't. Rippin got drilled. Now the ball's free. It was out of fumble. Now the Ducks have an opportunity. And roaring the other way is Henry Mondu, but now they're saying incomplete pass. The pressure was coming from Jonah Moy. Jonah Moy, nice job here. He's Really, one of the better defensive uh, pressures, one quarter. of the better pressures getting all year at the quarterback has been Moy and Hollins from that outside linebacker position. There's some energy from Oregon. That's a good job there by Moy on third down, getting after it. First quarter's been all Boise, the Las Vegas Bowl, and ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. All ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. Welcome back to the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. First play of the second quarter is coming, and Boise State is lining up for a field goal. Their field goal kicker is Hayden Hogarth, the walk-on who started his career at Bethune-Cookman been very reliable particularly on short field goals 17 of 21 on the season and four of five from this range this one a 37 yard attempt assuming there's no trickery at foot 
home. Oh. Movement in the interior. That won't be enough yeah, but for it, the first it, down. It, but it, it, it makes, or, it, it makes Boise State also maybe think about it. Now you go inside the 20-yard line. And Snap infraction. Offense, oh, okay. number 60. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So a little hesitation on the snap, so snap infraction rather than drawing. So now what this does instead is it backs it up to 42 yards, which would be the longest of the season. Boy, he, for he moved just a, ever so slightly. Look the hair. It's a good call by the official. See if Hogarth has an extra yard in him. On the way. And it is no good, and Oregon comes up with a much-needed stop. So Boise State's had a couple of opportunities. Yeah. Now they got one of them back by forcing a turnover and going down and scoring. Give Oregon's could defense. Be, could be worse. Yeah, give yeah. Oregon's defense credit, keeping them in this game. They got the turnover down deep inside their own red zone, and now they come up with a stop and force this field goal, and Boise State ends up missing it. And sometimes you need something like this to, to spark you, to get you going. Let's see if that's what happens here for Oregon. Remember, known for Herbert and their ability to throw, but a lot of times can control the line of scrimmage and wear defenses down with their tempo. Duck offense hasn't had much going its way, so they go straight ahead with Kanai Benoit to pick up five. And see, even though Freeman's out, Benoit and these running backs, they can run. And, and the tempo and the physicality of running the ball, that, that can be really effective if you're patient. Back to Benoit. He's greeted by Van Der Esch. Well, he is, <laughs> he is a, lot of fun, man. a lot of fun to watch. And if, and if Oregon does continue to run the ball, that's obviously the main guy that they've got to be able to get those linemen, those guards, got to be able to climb up to that second level. And it's tough to do because he, he evaluates a play so quickly that he moves past those linemen before they get a chance to work from their double team on the D lineman up to the linebacker. A double-figure tackle seven times this season. He's well on his way to that, it would appear today. Herbert reloads. A little tunnel screen for Dylan Mitchell. And Mitchell found enough room to pick up a first down out to the 40-yard line. Well, Mitchell had to work all the way back and get where his convoy was. So nice job by Herbert waiting until he was able to clear and getting off of that corner to make that throw. Low snap. Oh. And he gets it to Benoit. That could have been disastrous. Instead, they pick up a couple. And Van Der Esch was the first guy there. <laughs> Benoit. Maybe, maybe I'll just, if he's not the first guy there, I'll ben, mention that. Otherwise, yeah. it goes without saying. And David Moa, defensive lineman, second team all Mountain West, is down for Boise State. Yeah, Benoit is thinking, man, is somebody, can somebody block 38? <laughs> It hasn't happened this year. I'm not sure it's going to start anytime soon. Back after this. Well, Leighton Vanderish, 6'4", 240, off to a great start here in the Las Vegas Bowl. Remember, Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, the defensive MVP in the championship game. The last game that he played at 16 tackles and an interception. I love this play right here early. Out in space against the quickest back, Tony Brooks James. Turns the ball over really not just makes plays he's the kind of the brains of that front seven make sure everybody's lined up right already got six tackles today Kirk he is top five in the country in solo tackles with six solo tackles a game five of the six so far have been solo as Charles Nelson got the ball out on the edge and bring up third down and short for Oregon from the lead to get the ball right to midfield a couple yards short of it Brooks James in the backfield with Herbert. Herbert going to throw for it, and it's incomplete. It goes through the hands a little too tall of the tight end, Cam McCormick. Well, you want to keep the ball here because Boise State has run 22 of their 26 offensive snaps in Oregon territory, but they have decided they're going to punt it away on fourth and two. He's six of eight, which is good, but 24 yards, and a lot of it is because he's throwing those quick, short throws, and... Boise State has been in position to be able to make plays. Not able to get the ball downfield yet at all. Too early to take a chance here in your judgment? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Almost got the rugby-style punt blocked. Williams makes the fair catch. Boise State will have it back on their own 16.
The Las Vegas Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. And the Lincoln Motor Company. You know who makes it in Vegas? High rollers. Players from both teams got to ride the high rollers, the world's largest observation wheel, 550 feet above the ground. It takes 30 minutes to get around that thing. You can see 360 degree views of the strip. You, do, you only see the tables when you come here, <laughs> typically. That's about all you see. <laughs> Boise State back on the ground. It is Jelks making the stop on Ryan Wolpen. We haven't heard a lot from Jalen Jelks, who has announced he will return for his senior year. Well, Jalen Jelks has had a heck of a year. We talked about him earlier. He and Troy Dye and Justin Hollins, Jonah Moy, Jordan Scott. Uh, you throw Mondu, 92, in there as a senior. What a, what a different-looking defense from the, the previous two, where they, they really struggled. Much better this year. Rippon has lots of time. Cannot connect. He was looking for Octavius Evans. It'll bring up third down and eight. I mean, th th this Oregon team was in the national championship just a couple years ago. 2014, they played Ohio State in the national championship. And in 15... They set a school record for allowing 37 points a game. That's not a good school record. They come back in 16 last year, went up to allowing 41 points a game. So they set a new school record, and this year much better with Jim Levitt, only at 28 points a game. The stats in a lot of cases, Kirk, are remarkable. They jumped, in some cases, almost 100 spots in defensive categories as Rippon throws back oh. shoulder, but the flag's going to come in. A little too aggressive on the coverage was against Wilson was the defender Diamador Lenore. And Lenore is a true freshman in there for Graham right now. Defense number 15. Right there, the left penalty. hand got a Automatic. hold of that jersey up by the shoulder pad. Surprised on third down. You, know, you leave Lenore as a freshman, talented player, but you leave him out there alone with Wilson. Wasn't in bad position. He just, he just extended his arm and grabbed onto that jersey up by the shoulder pad and gives Boise State a first down. Well, it's not really surprising is to see flags thrown against the Ducks. They are the most penalized team in the country. And that one keeps him from getting off the field. Comes Amadi on that blitz. Rippon sees it. See if Oregon gets out of that. Blitz was right here. Rippon gets the snap off. And just runs away from it. Wolpen pushes his way out to about the 30. Austin Fallyu, freshman from Santa Ana, California, makes a stop. Fallyu at 290 pounds, true freshman there at the nose and coming off the field. Scott, we talked about earlier, he plays in there too. Nice to be able to rotate fresh bodies in there in the middle. It's something they have not had for the last couple of years. And Levitt brought in a 3-4. They play with three down linemen most often. On second and nine, rip and roll into the outside, man wide open, first down and out of bounds. C.T. Thomas, a freshman from Lancaster, Texas, makes the grab. Another first down for Boise State. And another job of using kind of a little bit of a rub, using one receiver to get in the way of the defender trying to stay with another receiver. It frees up the freshman to get him to that sideline and pick up a first down. All right, Herbie Montel Cozart in now. He, Mahomes with him. The motion give on the fly sweep. Another way to get the ball to Cedric Wilson. And he gets out close to the 45-yard line. Good pick up on first down. Wilson's uh, hobbling a bit as he heads to the sideline. Uh, hopefully he is okay. He, clearly they're their number one guy that they want to throw the ball to. I have to check him out. Looks like Kind of the way he's running, maybe an ankle could be bothering him. He's had a terrific senior year, first team all conference performer. On second down, back to the ground, and there is Mahone. Boy, he, he showed a little explosion getting through that hole. And they, they run a power play. The left guard, John Molchomp, pulls around to lead him through there. You know, now they're going a little bit of tempo themselves, trying to catch Oregon, trying to substitute some people in, but they're going on quick snaps now. 
Griffin's pass, fairly accurate, looking for Danins. He couldn't hold it, second and ten. You know, when, Co when Montel Cozart comes in, and if you're a Boise fan, you already know this, but what that does for a defense is it gives you time during the week of preparation. You can't just study Brett Rippin, and, and this is what they do when four is in there. You have to spend, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe an hour a day on dealing with quarterback run games. You're really preparing for two different style of offenses dealing with Boise State this year. That's really something that Boise State hasn't had a lot of, as diverse as their offense has been. We've got a completed pass down close to the 40, and then we're going to have another penalty against the Ducks. This looks like a roughing the passer. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 35. Forceful contact to the helmet of the quarterback. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Ooh, they, they, they'll, they'll probably take a peek at that. Troy died, had the shot, so. Boy, rip, how about Rippin? Yeah. Shows the toughness, makes a great throw, points the finger. Hey, hey ref, you, you got my back. <laughs> Quarterbacks have to know everything. Boy, Dye had a sensational season. Boyce, he was very aware of him. Zach Hill saying they had to be cognizant and said, that guy's a stud. He made a mistake there. Oregon's made a few of them, and... Rippin got himself out of trouble and almost turned it into a touchdown. He had John Bates running out there. John wasn't quite prepared for the ball to be thrown, but Rippin almost made something out of nothing. If Bates is over here and he works this way, and nobody from Oregon stays with him. See how he works across the field? Oregon's in man coverage. Everybody has a, a receiver, a tight end. Nobody picks up the freshman. And they got pressure. That's the only thing that saved them there. They got pressure on Rippin, but blown assignment. Oregon catches a break. Should have been a touchdown. Cozart's back in to take the snap. On the ground. Pick up of about three for Wolfen. Be looking at a third and seven from the 22. No, pardon me. They gave me kept that pile moving. Yeah, he picked up a couple kept, more. Kept, kept Got going. five. Let's call it third and five. Boy, Oregon's defense really being tested. The will of this Oregon defense. Seems like every time we're looking up, Boise State's in plus territory. They're inside the 30. They're getting close to the 20. They've held. Remember, they forced the field goal that they missed. They came up with a turnover. Can the Ducks do it again? Can they hang on here and get another stop? Rippin throws to the outside and inaccurately. It almost seemed as if that snap came back a little slowly. Might have thrown off Brett's timing just a hair, so it'll bring the field goal unit back out. Again, give Oregon credit. Had the, had the late hit, gave up some plays. Boise looking again. They, they've got Oregon on the ropes here in Vegas. They've got them. They got a shot here. And instead, Oregon kind of... Their defense deserving a lot of credit because they've been on the field a lot here in this first half, but they're keeping them in the game. Hayden Hogarth missed from 42, this one from 39. Kick on the way, and this one is true. Boise State pushes the lead to 17-0, and they keep the Ducks offense sleeping. Boise State taking on Oregon. There's more over the middle, wide open. by Boise State. Or has a man wide open. Touchdown. Blunt on the handoff. That's going to be a safety. A lot of animosity on the field. McGarrett Blunt nailing Byron out right on the chin. They've only played two times, but both have been memorable. Both Boise State wins. One in Keller Moore's first road start and the other in Chip Kelly's first game on the blue. And unlike McGarrett Blunt and Byron Howe, Doug fans, Bronco fans, <laughs> and sit together peacefully. There was a lot of trash talk in that first game in Eugene. And if you remember, that's been several years ago, 2008, 2009 seasons. Blunt said leading up to the trip to Boise that they owed him a backside whipping. And they didn't get it, but and the punch that continues to get played, even though these guys were grade school or junior yeah. high, they, they've all seen it. They remember it. They they know about it. Certainly Justin Herbert does. I mean, he grew up a, an Oregon fan. Grew up about a mile from Austin Stadium. Kid from Eugene. Understands everything there is to know about Oregon football and the pressure of being the hometown quarterback. Well, one thing he better 
understand is they have 40 yards of total offense right now and they're down <laughs> 17 with 8.59 to go in the first half. They've not been able to get the ball downfield and they've not been able to run the ball. And I know Royce Freeman's not in there, but Oregon, if they're going to win today, they've got to be able to be patient and run the ball. Try to run it with Tony Brooks James. I mean, Blue is just swarming everywhere. Van Der Esch was first, had plenty of help along the way. You know, that, they, they lost Willie Taggart. They, they brought in Mario Cristobal as a, as a new coach. Here's another good look at Van Der Esch there, how quickly he is able to identify and make his reads to be able to get into that backfield. But listen, they signed a petition. They wanted Mario Cristobal and this staff to stay together, and this is our guy. Well, you're down 17. Why don't you fight for your guy here? Mario may be ready to sign a petition to get him to play better. That throw is too high from Herbert. It is third down and eight coming. Here is Mario Cristobal, the new head coach at Oregon. He played at Miami as an offensive lineman, part of two national championship teams. Played for another one after a career as an assistant. He was the head coach at Florida International. Gave them their first winning season, first bowl trip. Inexplicably, he was fired there. Went to Alabama as the offensive line coach. Spent four years with Saban and won a title. And after being co-offensive coordinator this year, as we have alluded to, he's named the head coach on a permanent basis just over a week ago. Third down and eight for Cristobal's team. Herbert had to get rid of it, and he did quickly to Mitchell. It's a first down for the Ducks. You know, Cristobal, as a coach, Kirk almost didn't follow that path. In the late 90s, he got the call for a job he'd been pursuing with the Secret Service. Got the job, woke up in a cold sweat the next morning, said he couldn't leave football, and he has his first Power 5 job here, but the first half of it has been less than stellar. Well, he ended up making a great call because he likes to influence young men in a positive way as a coach, not just trying to win football games. And that's why I'm anxious to see how his team responds to this adversity. Herbert he suffered a broken collarbone this year. One of the things he wanted to adjust was knowing when to get down or when the journey was over. And it's a third down coming up. I don't know if Oregon has been in plus territory today. They came close on one drive when they were fourth and two. They've not crossed the 50-yard line yet this, in this first half. You know what? It was deep into the game in Chip Kelly's first game before they crossed in, crossed midfield against Boise then. Oregon fans hoping that the crystal ball era will turn out quite that well. It's quite too early to say. Into the middle, and it's picked off. Intercepted right over the middle. And the play is made by Jordan Happel, a redshirt freshman from Portland, Oregon. And I'll bet that felt good against the home state team. Boy, every time we talk about Boise, other than Vanderich, it seems like we're talking about a lot of freshmen. Happel does a good job. Look at the eyes of the quarterback. He's looking to the middle, trying to look off the safety, which he did, but he didn't even see Jordan Happel. He throws it right into his arms for a turnover. Welcome back to the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl. It is part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Bowl season getting underway today. New Year's six games. Man, what a terrific matchup. This will be in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Friday, December 29th. USC and Ohio State, 8.30 Eastern Time on ESPN. JT Barrett's final game as a Buckeye. Sam Darnold maybe didn't quite meet the crazy expectations. Rippon going up top. Got a man out there. Couldn't quite hook up with Octavius Evans. It'll be second and ten. Love the call by Zach Hill. Even though it was a commercial break and maybe slowed the momentum after the interception, they come right back with that first play and take a shot downfield. And then they go back to the rotation with Cozart, more the mobile quarterback coming in, continuing to give Oregon's defense Different looks, not just with the quarterbacks, but with the formations, personnel groupings. We have to call timeout. They switched the quarterback a little slow timeout. to get everything settled Boise with State. the different personnel Their groups. First so 30 seconds. Parson will use the timeout. A 17-0 lead for Boise State in a first half in which everything has 
gone wrong for the Ducks. They've had the ball six times. They've punted three times and turned it over the other three. And you don't have to be an expert to know that that is not the goal. That's not well. And they're waving towels down on the sideline right now. And you can understand a little distraction, but they just haven't played with any crispness at all so far. No, not, no, not at all. I mean, we'll see how the game ends up. Oregon's defense deserves some credit mm -hmm. for keeping them in the football game. I mean, we, 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 really thought Oregon's offense had a chance. We were anxious to see how they would execute against a very athletic Boise defense, a very determined Boise defense. Uh, still a long way to go in this game, but right now Oregon is just holding on, and this Oregon defense has been asked to do a lot in the first half to keep them in this game. Boise State just short of Oregon territory. They've already run 25 plays on the Ducks side of the 50. Oregon's run none on Boise side. Wolpen. Wrapped up and knocked down. No room to run at all. Quick tackle was made by the Amador Lenore as we check in with Molly. Reese, you saw Cedric Wilson hobble off. He was pointing to the outside of his left foot, swearing and cringing in pain, and he even tried to stand on his left leg and nearly fell over. They have heavily taped it, but he's still walking gingerly. He is not at 100%, Reese. Here's the play, Molly. The Jet sweep, rocket sweep. Look, it's hard to tell exactly what happened to him. But Cedric's a guy that they want to throw it to, hand it to, get the little touch passes to. And without him, that is a major weapon gone from the Boise receiving core. Rippin feels that pressure behind, steps away from it, throws it up deep. C.T. Thomas covered wow. very well by Spring. How about the hit by Jonah Moy, who got in a little bit earlier. Rippin holds on to the very last second until, boom, gets hit right as he throws that football. Clean hit. Did a good job by Moy not getting too high. Getting close to hitting the head, the face mask or head, or the helmet there of the quarterback Rippin. And Oregon's defense again gets, gets off the field. Quinn Skillen will punt the first punt of the day for Boise State. Mitchell fighting it a little bit, but got under it at just about the 21-yard line. And Oregon will try to get the offense going when you come back. A poignant moment at the coin toss for this Las Vegas Bowl. That is Riley Goldgard, who's walking out to participate in the coin toss and do the ceremonial toss to start. She was one of the 546 people injured in the Las Vegas shooting Boise back on October 1st. 58 people were killed in that tragedy. It's something that continues to be in the minds of not only the people of Las Vegas, but all of us. A terrible, inexplicable tragedy. It was great to see Riley walking. That was the first time publicly she had been able to do that. Good gain on first down to Nelson as we check in with Molly again. Yeah, every senior left tackle Tyrell Crosby is a Las Vegas area native, and he switched jersey numbers today, wearing number 58 to honor the 58 lives lost in the Las Vegas shooting. When talking about it with me, he got emotional. He cheered up, saying this game means the world to him. It's a way of representing those who've lost their lives. And botch the handoff attempt on a high snap, but Herbert's going to make something out of it, and Justin Herbert. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Molly last night saying that if this were a different bowl game because Tyrell Crosby, much like Royce Freeman, has NFL aspirations, might not be playing. But here's him going to work. A guy who hasn't allowed a sack all year, hasn't allowed a quarterback hit, according to some, but clearing the way on the broken play. Johnny Johnson trying to get up close to the 50. Ducks trying to... They won't get any points for it, but he's trying to cross into Boise territory yeah. for the first time today. Yeah. And I, Mario Cristobal says it says a lot because of where he played at Miami, the players he played with throughout his coaching uh, stops. He says that Cro Tyrell Crosby, the best offensive lineman that he's seen or, or been around, period. I think that says a lot about uh, the respect he has for him. A lot of heat on Herbert. That looks like an interception, and it's going the other way. Looks like a pick six in Kekala. Kamiho, touchdown, Boise State. Justin Herbert just throws this ball out into the flat, and the receiver, you know, he's, he's creating, he's, he's improvising. The receiver, Charles Nelson, goes downfield, 
instead of cutting out, it's easy to look at Herbert and say, what's he doing? But I'm up here thinking, where is Charles Nelson going as his quarterback is starting to scramble for his life? He needs to come back to him instead of turning and going downfield. So a miscommunication. And Canijo, who has his second interception, is just sitting right there, steps in front of it and says, thanks you, thank you very much. Take that for a touchdown. It has been a colossal fail of the first half for the Oregon offense. Their fourth turnover just resulted in a pick six. Justin Herbert throwing the pick. Kekawa Kanijo putting Boise State up 24 to nothing. Every coach, every player trying to talk to Herbert to try to keep his head up. This is one of the first turnovers. In fact, the first turnover, Tony Brooks James on a fumble out in the flat. Here's another one where they got to the quarterback, caused a fumble. This is the interception. And then the last one for a pick six. Good looking, true freshman, nickelback, Kanijo. 5'10, 175 pounds, steps in front of that, takes it all the way in. So even though the Oregon defense is keeping them in the game, the pick six, now you're down 24. You got 5'11 to go in the first half. They've not been able to cross midfield. Herbert, how does he respond after that pick six? There is some historical words of hope. They give it on fly sweep to Jalen Red two years ago in this bowl game. BYU turned it over five times in the first half, fell behind Utah 35 0. They didn't win. They came back to make it a 35 28 game. So you're trying to you're trying to keep the crowd excited here. <laughs> People watching back home. Huh? Gotta give Apple Green some hope here, Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't hasn't gone well here in the first half. Boise State has been really impressive. I mean, that's the thing is it's easy to sit here and look at Herbert and Oregon's offense and say what's wrong but Boise State deserves a lot of credit here for the preparation of getting ready to play in this bowl game they have not crossed midfield yet and four and a half minutes to go in the first half but everything here you're thinking okay they got to be able to run the ball can't run the ball got to get the ball out in space you got a lot of quick guys out in space they're making tackles in space everything they've tried Boise State has defended Andy Avalos, the defensive coordinator for Boise State. Had a spectacular first half. Herbert, there's another big hit on the quarterback. Nobody open. Pressure coming. Leighton Van Der Esch again. And, you know, they, they try to block him. This gives you an idea of his athletic ability. Is watch how he's able to get in and go over top of the back who steps up. The back does a nice job of stepping up right there. Submarines him. But instead of him just accepting that and using his hands, look at the athletic ability. Up and over him, and then comes up with a sack. One thing Herbert has not done a good job of is a kind of a presence in the pocket of feeling that pressure and getting rid of the football. You know the awards we've talked about Vanderess winning this year? Hasn't won enough. Williams muffs the punt. And everything's going the Broncos' way as Boise State falls on it. DeAndre Pierce there to grab it. Son of Antonio Pierce, former New York Giant. This is just what Oregon needed. There's one way to get into plus territory. Let Boise State fumble it and try to recover it. But Pierce heads up, does a good job of getting back there and jumping on top of the football. By the way, Brian Harson, 321 to go in the first half. They're not thinking, all right, let's just work the clock here. Oh no, no. They're, they're, they're going to keep doing what they've been doing. They're trying to think of getting more points here. Try to get it to 31 by half. We've got Mahone in the backfield. Madison has played. He's their 1,000-yard rusher at running back, but not a lot. He's been dealing with an ankle issue. There's Mahone carrying that ball a little loosely at the beginning, but he put it away and got across the floor. Think about what these Oregon players have been through. You know, Mark Helfrich is fired. They, they bring in Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart's got, you know, a lot of optimis, optimism, and, and they're going to recruit well, and they're going to make the most out of this year. And, and all of a sudden, he, at the end of it, leaves to go to Florida State. Now they're determined, this is our guy. we got to have Mario Cristobal. He's our guy. So they're trying to get ready for a bowl game, and now they're down 24. And they got assistant coaches that are down there trying to coach them. 
that you don't know. Are you going to Florida State after this game? Are you staying? Are you going? Well, or? talking about Jim Levitt. We yeah, saw Levitt yeah. talking to uh, I mean, Justin Herbert a minute ago, and he was disappointed not to get the job. No, I, I, my, my point is these players, they're not just trying to figure things out against Boise. Yeah. They've been dealing with a lot. He's taught, that's the defensive coordinator who wanted the head coaching job talking to the quarterback. When was the last time you saw a defensive coordinator talking to the quarterback like that? My point is, imagine being Herbert. Imagine being these players, and your best player is healthy, and he decides he doesn't want to play in the bowl game because he needs to get ready for the NFL. There's just a lot going on for this Oregon team beyond just X's and O's and trying to play Boise, who's incredibly well-prepared, incredibly determined to beat your tail. Hey, look, we want to be clear about this, too. I know that schools outside the Power Five sometimes get irritated and say, oh, you know, every time we play well, it's because the other guy's not ready. But you got your hands full. Is that a catch out there on the side? And it was by A.J. Richardson. What a grab. I was just saying you got your hands full. Even if you are ready, if you're not, they'll start working on you like this. Look they at this got, grab. Yeah, they got a flag in the backfield. We'll take a look to see what that is. But he lays out on the field. incredible pass. effort. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 97. And they're going to get Jalen Jelks on top of it with hands into the face. So on top of the completion, which was, by the way, that, that you know, you get into the bowl season, you start looking at the plays of the bowl season. That, that That's a pretty good starting point here in the first day of bowl games of a receiver going out and making a play. Right there, 97 green, right into the face there. There's no question good about call it. by the official, but I'd love to see that catch again. That was beautiful. I get 31. Plus the penalty. Like and how, how about the fact that Cedric Wilson's down right now with an injury, and you're wondering who can step up and make a play, and A.J. Richardson says, no problem. Put the ball up there. I'll make a play on it. Does a good job of getting that right elbow underneath the football to be able to secure the ball in. You saw it go up toward his shoulder just a little bit. He was looking up into the sun to try to grab this, too. But good coverage, by the way, by Thomas Graham, the freshman. Oh, Graham is a future star at the corners out there. But Richardson looks to have gotten the better of him that time. They're taking a, a peek at this, see if that ball may, may have touched, touched the surface. Saw it move up toward the shoulder a little bit as he rolled over, and you wonder if the ground helped him secure it. This is where I actually turn to Davey Kataya and say, <laughs> all right, big fella. He's our official up in the booth, normally helps us out. So after seeing we're left one, to our own devices. You call this a catch or not? I, after there was another shot that it showed where it made it look a little bit more in question. This ball moved there. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, right there. After after he came, after he turns, the ball moves just yeah here it, ever so slightly. And that, see there, yeah, right, right yeah. there. Yeah. After review, the receiver did not maintain possession of the pass to the ground. It was incomplete. The 15-yard penalty for hands to the face will be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So the hands to the face penalty even more costly. So it's not the huge game, but still Boise State after the 15-yard penalty will have it on the 37 of Oregon with under two minutes to play here in the first half. My man Davey Kataya is texting me and saying <laughs> incompletion. So we appreciate that. But now that we take that one off the board, but we still got to appreciate the effort there by Richardson to lay it out. As close to a catch as you can get without it being a catch. Big hole up the middle for Madison as he rumbles inside the 30. And they run that counter play. The right side of the offensive line collapses Oregon's D-line and opens up the easy lanes for those big boys to pull around. You want to talk about a demoralizing touchdown as if the entire first half hasn't been demoralizing for the Ducks. You let the Broncos put another one on the board and go to the half at 31. Urban back in up at the top. Madison DeVault. Cedric Wilson has checked back in the top. It was good to see. Good to see him there. Coming up on the Mercedes-Benz halftime report, Kevin Nagandi, Booger McFarlane, and Matt Brown. Let you know what's going on. Bulls really 
getting cranked up today. Full slate on ABC and on ESPN. Brian Harson still the two timeouts. Good protection for Rippin. Rippin right on the money, and it'll be a first down inside the 15. And Wilson appears to be healthy enough, maybe a tad. Watch the patience here by Rippin. Waits, waits again, all time, all kinds of time, but puts it right where it has to be. Relationship in the work that Brett Rippin and Cedric Wilson have put in over these last three years. You can just see when you give him time to throw, and you don't take away Wilson, they're gonna they're gonna make that happen. A Rippin struggled with confidence early in the season. Herbie didn't throw his first touchdown pass into the fifth game, and one of the guys that stuck with him was Wilson. Told him, hey man, just. Keep doing your thing. Come out and throw the ball. Don't worry about, you know, when Kozart's coming in or whatever. Throw the ball. I think it was about week eight, the Utah State game, where they just seemed to turn the corner. And I think it allowed Rippin to start to trust the linemen and the receivers around him. And I think they also, the play calling from Zach Hill opened up a little bit more instead of being so conservative. And I think that's where the offense started to really take off. All right, now look at this one, Herbie. Both quarterbacks in there together. We've seen this on tape quite a bit. Rippin taking the snap. Kozart's in motion. Uh-oh. Oh, statue of Liberty working. And the Ducks have it. And Troy Dye keep his feet. That might be the break they needed. Troy Dye. I got your Statue of Liberty, and I'm taking it the other way. Touchdown, Oregon. As much as we appreciate Boise State and some of these tricks, does this one come back to, back, to, to backfire on them? Got up into the face mask. A Mahone, who's a freshman, and Troy Dye, who's been the kind of the catalyst of this defense most of the year, number one of the team in tackles, picks that ball up and shows he's got the speed to take it all the way to the end zone. And yeah, you're right. 24 nothing. About to feel like it's either going to be 27 or 31 to nothing at the half, and instead 24 to seven. Huge turnaround for Oregon. That this defense has done everything they, they could do to keep them in this game. Still haven't run a play on that side of the 50. Offense oh. number 90. No, we're, we're going to keep track of that. Replay the try. But the defense gave him a touchdown, Rip, gave him some hope. Ripping, you know, he was waiting and waiting. As he was waiting, hit, the ball got higher and higher mm -hmm. and got right up into the face mask. So it'll be a little bit of a longer extra point attempt. Every now and then, got to be careful getting cute. Yeah. And, but it's easy to say that when it doesn't work. For sure. You know. Because sometimes it does work, and it kind of makes you a legend, as it's happened for Ian Johnson. Boise State out of the huddle, trailing 42 to 41, going for a two-point conversion from the three-yard line. Under center goes Zabranski. Rolls to his right, makes it. It's back to Johnson. He scores! Ian Johnson, they rolled the ball to Ian Johnson, and he scored. You can be a champion, champion. Watch the ball get up. So he's waiting, waiting, and then it gets up into the into the face mask of Mahone. And Troy Dye is thinking, that's exactly, he saw that ball on the ground. He's thinking, i got to get to that ball. He's got the speed to be able to take it to the end zone. Now for just a second, right after Troy grabbed it, he stumbled just a little. Able to keep his feet. Man, oh man, did Oregon need that. And now they're now they're back in the game. Starting to feel the vibe here in Vegas. But still down 17. This has still been all Boise State in the first half. Avery Williams. Williams gets up close to the 30-yard line. 32 seconds remaining here in the first half. Kick off your NFL Sunday, the countdown crew, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Live from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, the Patriots and Steelers headlining the day. They'll take you right up to kickoff Sunday. NFL countdown presented by Snickers and Monday Night Football. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, 
Falcons and Buccaneers. Man, is it tight in the NFC South. Saints and Panthers. Saints and Falcons played a great game the other night. Did interception to Deion Jones in the end zone to yeah. save the day for yeah. the Falcons. It's a great division. I love when the Steelers and the Patriots get together. It, it's always, and, and this week it's huge because whoever wins emerges more than likely with home field advantage. Rippon trying to get it back, and he's got his man. It's Wilson, separate Wilson inside the 10. Thomas Graham, the freshman, has been tested. And you see Wilson is down, but look at this. He's tested, pretty good position, pretty good position, the ball is just perfectly thrown and there's the speed there by Wilson despite the injury whatever is hampering him and slowing him down he had enough speed to be able to go by Graham just enough but the ball by Brett Rippon could not have been placed into the arms he couldn't have handed it better to Wilson than the way he threw that picked up 66 and the ball's on the six first and goes so many teams and coaches. Look, I understand it's a bowl game. Maybe you, you know, you let it all fly here. You have that disastrous play on the other end to give up the defensive touchdown. Instead, you come back yeah. and you take a shot and it pays off. Yeah. I love that answer. I love the response, yeah. like you said, after the devastating turnover to give Oregon a little bit of life. Instead of, like you said, instead of just shutting it down and, all right, let's go in and talk about it. We still got the lead, guys. Uh, Brian Harson and Zach Hill say, hey, let's take a shot downfield and see if we can hit a big one in Wilson because anytime Wilson's left one-on-one, -on -one, you get a chance. Mm -hmm. Put it up there and let him let him adjust to the ball. You know, Zach Hill, the offensive coordinator, told us this week there were times this year when he felt like that maybe he wasn't aggressive enough uh, with Brett Rippon. That's the polar opposite of that, making that kind of play. Now we'll see how the Broncos are able to pay it off. Remember, a lot of rub routes down in this area. Like to try to use the receivers to try to get in the way of a defender. Also there remember the time, uh, timeouts are gone, and there's another interception. And now Oregon has an opportunity going the other way. Is number two, Tyree Robinson. He's on his way to the house. And to end consecutive huge plays by the Oregon defense on consecutive drives, and the Ducks are back in this thing. Well, just when you talk about Rippin doing a good job, here's the, I just said, look out for the rub route. That's exactly what Richardson works to the inside, but give Oregon credit and Tyree Robinson credit for not getting picked, not getting in the way. Watch how he kind of does a good job of being able to get over top of the rub and then steps in front of it. Brett Rippin anticipated and hoped that the rub would work instead of waiting to make sure and then throwing it. He just kind of threw it out there, thinking that Robinson would be impacted, and he wasn't. Two defensive touchdowns in 30 seconds. A 100-yard interception return, an 86-yard fumble return before that. And the Ducks, despite being completely ineffective on offense, they're only down 10. So you got this receiver, Rod Richardson, working out here. This receiver working here. You're trying to create a rub to where the defender actually runs into each other. They avoid each other, and then Robinson steps in front of it. Ripping got drilled, by the way, after he threw it for punishment, I guess, of throwing the ball. <laughs> yeah, he should have waited just to make sure and then let it go. Instead, he, he threw it early anticipating and kind of hoping that it would work and it Oregon's defense again able to avoid it and remember Herbie that's the second interception in the end zone that he's thrown in this hat yep another scoring opportunity went awry Boise has turned it over in the red zone three times there have been seven turnovers in the first half how about scoring 14 points and you haven't crossed midfield offensively in a half I think, I think like, that's like going to the tables here and it just keeps turning up your number, those guys keep hitting, right? Yeah. I mean, you could have lost your fortune by now with a stat like that. Instead, a couple of good rolls. Just when you think everything snake eyes is rolling your way. Two defensive touchdowns in a half minute. That's, you see things you don't usually see in bowl games, it yep. seems. Yep.
No, we I just talked it. about how Brian Harson and Boise, you know, instead of accepting that fumble and a touchdown, they're coming right back and then just Timeout. like that. Oregon. The blink they're of second, an eye. Right? 30 seconds. 24 to 14. You can tell by the formation how uh, I'll, I'll bet you a lot that they're not going to take uh, take it and heave it down the field this time. I think they're going to they're going to get to the going to get to the locker room and try to sort out how it all went wrong in the last 30 plus seconds. Oregon showing some fight, and there are plenty of folks who show the fight. The UFC Performance Institute that was Forrest Griffin leading us toward the octagon. It's a remarkable facility they have there. It really is. Just built this. I mean, it's beautiful. All and of it. So if you're training there, that, that's the thing that really stands out as these guys get ready. We, we, we would have a couple rounds, me and you. Yeah, you see, Forrest is pointing to me. Clearly, he knows that I was on the verge of choking you out there. <laughs> that would have been it. You know who um, the cauliflower here was in play yesterday, <laughs> yeah, too? It was. You know who else used to do some MMA was Mario Cristobal. He fought MMA in the late 90s in the Miami area. So just when it looked like he was about to have his team choked out, they broke the hold and showed some fight back. We'll get you to the studio Mercedes-Benz halftime report right after this messages and a word from our ABC stations and was turned into a good one. Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. Boise State, Cedric Wilson, the playmaker, 26-yard touchdown catch from Brett Rippon. We've got a fantastic game in Vegas right now. The Broncos up by 10 against the Ducks. Welcome to the studio. Kevin Nagani here, Mac Brown and Booger McFarland. This looked like all Boise all the time. 24-0 lead, and then boom, the defense for the Ducks coming back and creating turnovers in the red zone. Well, Brian Harson created the edge. They had him ready to go. They've given up two red zone interceptions, a missed field goal, and had a fumble for a touchdown. This thing shouldn't even be close. And you got to give Levitt credit, defensive coordinator for Oregon. He's the only reason they have any chance in the second half. Right, and from an offensive standpoint, Herbert missed five games this year. You have to wonder how sharp he is, how comfortable he is in the pocket, because right now he just doesn't look sharp at all. Well, they're not blocking anybody. They, well, you're, they're you're back to front. Yeah. They don't look very sharp when they're on their back. Give you some perspective, too. Boise State in the previous eight games, two turnovers. In mm. eight games, we just saw three in the red zone in the first half. That's boys. I mean, they could be up much bigger than this because we haven't seen, as you mentioned, a lot from this offense with Oregon. And the guys talked about it on the broadcast with Royce Freeman not playing in this game. Their best player, nearly 1,500 yards rushing. He's not playing, but he's on the sidelines. And we saw a video of him talking to the team pregame as a coach. What do you make of this? Well, he's not part of our team anymore. He decided not to play in the game. I don't bring him. I don't bring him to the site. I don't let him be around the bowl. I don't have him speaking to our team for sure. Uh, if he's on our football team, he's at home. He's watching because he made the decision. I don't want to play. I'm not going to be part of it. When you're not part of it, you're not part of it with me, Boog. And the main thing, it's a distraction because there's some players in that huddle saying, man, you want us to huddle up and rally around you, but you can't come out here and play with us. So if I'm Crystal Ball, I really question the fact that Royce Freeman was allowed to address the team. You're either with us or, you, or you're not. The fact that he's on the sideline to me is an issue and may be the responsibility of this slow start for Oregon. Yeah, Mario Crystal Ball, of course, taken over a week ago as the head coach. He was the co-OC. Uh, of course, uh, the changes with the coaching staff. Freeman, by the way, ranked number seven overall by Mel Kuyper as a running back as he looks at the draft, of course, next spring. We saw the sluggish offense from Oregon. You're watching Capital One Bowl Media. Welcome back to the 2007 Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Bizarre first half in Vegas, to say the least. Things got all flipped around, turned upside down, as it were. 24-0 Boise State had the lead, the ball, looked like they were getting more, and in half a minute, Oregon scored two <laughs> defensive touchdowns, basically end-to-end. Whole, end. yeah. Whole field. Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreet, Molly McGrath with you. So, or, look, you look at the stats, it could be awful for Oregon. Now, second half, they're in the game. That was the last time you did a game where you had a team had four turnovers, hadn't crossed midfield, 77 yards of offense, and they're down, and they're, and they're down by 10. They're, they're still right there with a striking distance. 
when you have those types of numbers and you haven't been able to run the ball, and this is a team with Justin Herbert, a quarterback, that's been averaging 550 yards a game when he's been able to play, and they have 77 in the first half, and they're only down 10. And listen, it's easy. To, we keep talking about it. It's easy to, to knock on Oregon and say, what, what the heck's going on with their offense? But I, I, I think it's very important to talk about the preparation of Boise State, and they have as much to do with it as Oregon lacks, lacking execution, at least in the first half. Well, it's always it could be a different game here to start this second half. Well, the turnovers were very costly for Boise State, though they controlled really the first right. half. They started the second half, picking up four as we take a look at some of the things we were just talking about in the Pacific Five game summer. Yeah, Boise, they did everything that they needed to. They were able to build that big lead. They're up 24 to nothing. It looked like they might be up 31 to nothing after this interception, but this is a turning point. They're inside the red zone, 15 yard line. Try to trick play, Statue of Liberty ball goes on the ground and leader Troy Dye picks it up all the way back for a touchdown. And Boise State comes back with a big play and then Tyree Robinson with a pick six to get the Ducks within 10 before the half. Open out of the backfield and up close to the 40. It'll be a first down for Boise State. And those great plays by the Oregon defense, Kirk. Doesn't change the fact that Boise State was by far the better team in the first half. Yeah, and, and, and with that being said, you know, I, I think with a veteran like Rippon, and he's been in and out because they, they continue to bring in Cozart from time to time, but he's hit some big plays. They've had some explosives, but if I'm Brian Harson, I, I need him to be consistent with his decisions and with his accuracy throwing the football. Back to the ground, Wolfen. Picks up you know, a couple. He threw that pick where he was assuming that this, the, the, the pick play would work, that the rub route would work, and it didn't. He also threw an interception to Springs earlier in the game when he went up one-handed. They were inside the five-yard line. So, you know, he, he, he's played well, but he's had moments where he's just really hurt his offense. All three of the Boise State turnovers came in the red zone, two leading directly to touchdowns. Broncos ended up getting a stop, getting the ball back and scoring after the one turnover in the end zone. But the other two... Kept Oregon in the game, firing the slant, and Cedric Wilson making another catch. He had over 100 yards receiving in the first half. Such a natural, as a the ball skills that Cedric Wilson has. That his dad's got to be so proud of him to watch him develop and grow into the receiver that he has become. And he's clearly been fighting through you know, some kind of injury. It looks like a, a foot or an ankle injury because he's in and out. But he's had a great year. But that that was an example of just using those soft hands set up third and short. Oregon got penetration but couldn't make the tackle in the backfield so it'll be first down. You know some guys you know, keep in mind he's 6'3 and about 190 pounds and just sets up the young freshman Lenore with a little bit of a hesitation move and then moves to the inside but what I love is when the ball's in the air he doesn't panic at all. He stays calm. He trusts what the quarterback's going to do. And again, has the soft hands and the body control to make almost anything, any kind of catch you ask him to make. Justin Holland, the outside linebacker for the Ducks, who was part of the, part of the uh, mess up on the Statue of Liberty play, he helped cause the fumble. The handoff was high, but he was there to make a hit before Troy Dye scooped it up is the player that they are attending to. Big rangy guy. Junior from Arlington, Texas. Ryan Harson was talking about him this week from Boise State. He said he was one of the best players that they had seen this year on film in terms of defenders. And mm. Justin's working his way to the sideline. Yeah, watch his left knee right there. Mm. That is Manoise, or Mahone is coming down. Let's hope he's able to come back. Really not put a whole lot of weight on that. It means Jonah Moy, who rotates in and out with him at that spot, will have to take over. Allen's had a really good season, the second in the Pac-12, forcing three fumbles. He's involved in the other ones we mentioned. Mahone stretched it out too far, and Sampson knew was the player who almost got Mahone in the backfield on third down and missed him. This time he didn't. Yeah, you don't have electrifying speed. It's really hard for Boise State to go sideways, to go left and right. You know, you, you have this kind of speed out here, and the defensive backs have great speed. And New is a freshman at 6'1", 215, but has quickness of, of a safety. Hone tried to bounce it outside and ends up losing a lot of yards. 
Second down and 15 facing Rippon. Jelk's trying to apply some heat. Wilson sees the ball before the defender and goes and makes the play. Working on the Amador Lenore, and Wilson saw the ball coming and just showed that veteran savvy to get to it. And we just talked about the body control, the way he's able to read the ball. He comes back. The freshman never found the football. Lenore never saw it, but the veteran Wilson sees it, adjusts back, and is able to make that catch. That's what I'm saying. Like, some guys just naturally, when the ball's in the air, they just have it. They, they know how to be able to find the ball and catch it. Some guys, it's, it's a lot tougher to do. Pick up at 30, Mahomes straight ahead. And he gets it down around the 20-yard line. Pick up of six, maybe seven on the play. Yeah, that Oregon defense, they've been rotating some guys in and out. Samson New, who made that big play a few plays ago in first and 10. He looks like he's got a shoulder out there that's been bothering him. We already saw Hollins go down, and I think New got hurt when he made that play on first and 10. He started to hold his left shoulder way back three plays ago. He's been out on the field basically with his left arm injured. Freshman from San Diego back to his feet. 10-point lead for the Broncos. Come back to the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. And as Samson knew, the freshman linebacker for Oregon on this drive, the Ducks have had a couple of linebackers banged up. Troy Dye hasn't been out there either. Their leader scored a touchdown earlier, though Molly was told he would return. Look the plays in opponent territory. This will be the 32nd play Boise has run in Duck territory. That's one more play than the Ducks offense has run the whole game. So you got a linebacker right here, Leatu, who hasn't played a lot of football. And Mahone is hit quickly. And Jimmy Swain was one of the first ones there to make the stop. Molly, what do you have on the duck injury situation? Yeah, a lot of injuries down here. Reese, Troy Dye went back to the locker room because he is dehydrated. So they're remedying that situation. He is expected back, as you said. Okay, Molly, thank you. So that's, that's good news under any circumstances, but particularly when you consider the number of Injuries that suddenly the Oregon linebacking core is dealing with. Big third down coming here for the Broncos. Yeah, Oregon was confused. They had guys Time running out. on and off the field. Oregon. Almost had 12 first. players on the seconds. field. Jim Levitt, defensive coordinator, had to call the timeout. We saw big Jordan Scott having to rush off the field and they used the timeout rather than giving up the penalty, which given him a first down. On New Year's Day, ESPN has a college football playoff semifinal starts at 5 Eastern, 2 on the West Coast. Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy winner, taking on Brooklyn Smith and the Dogs, Oklahoma and Georgia. Then the nightcap in the All-State Sugar Bowl, Clemson and Alabama in the Superdome. Third straight year in the college football playoff. Those two will meet. What about Baker Mayfield? Uh, Baker Mayfield obviously wins the Heisman. If you give him time, Georgia, he has the accuracy to make you pay for it. He's got the weapons around him. Does a lot of what you see, the RPOs. You get too determined to come up with an average over 200 yards running the ball. He's got that vision to be able to make you pay for it there, too. Third down and four. Rippin to the outside. He has his man complete. Steps out of bounds at the 15, and it'll be a first down. Sean Monster had a big catch in the first half. He picks sure up is. the first down for the Broncos. Yeah, they've talked about how he's been a little bit more committed in practice, second half of the season, and with that commitment, he's become a more consistent route runner, and I think Brett Rippin trusts him more, and for him on a pivotal third down here, deep in Oregon territory, to dial him up, clearly feels good about what he's seeing. They ran a nice route and had nice hands. First order of business for the Broncos since they're in the red zones to take care of the football. Three turnovers in the red zone today. Kept Oregon in the game. Wolpen picks up a couple. Remember, Reese, this Oregon defense that was challenged time after time in the first half. I know they scored the two touchdowns, but I don't know how many times we watched him, not only with the turnover with Springs and the interception, but forcing field goals, 37 to 40 yard field goals, and just kind of keeping them in the game, keeping them believing. And we keep saying it, can they do it again? But they're put in that position again, and they're inside their own red zone where they got to come up with a stop, very least try to force a field goal. Rippin. Hines is tied in, cutting underneath, staying on his feet, headed toward the pylon. Touchdown, Alec Dance. How a 
about the agility from Alec Danins keeping his feet. That's a, that's a heck of a job by Danins, but a horrible job by Arion Springs. This is textbook you see in college football a lot by defensive backs using his shoulder and not wrapping up. You saw him pat his chest saying, my fault. And the reason he's saying it, he's in great position right there. Just wrap up. And I know he's a big tight end. It's 6'3", 250 pounds, and you're undersized. But you still have got to be able to wrap up there and give yourself a chance. He hits him and then doesn't wrap up. And the good player is going to bounce off that and score a touchdown. Damon, an inline tight end. The last part of the season has provided explosive plays. Nice little spin move. Boise pushes the lead back to 17. The Las Vegas Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. During all of the festivities of Bowl Week, players and staffers from Boise State and Oregon assisted the Goody Two Shoes Foundation, providing hundreds of disadvantaged kids in the Vegas area with shoes, socks, toys, and other things they need. Several kids out here at Sam Boyd Stadium enjoy the game. Those wearing blue and orange much happier, but Oregon not happy with this effort. Yeah, this is second down and long. Right here, Springs makes that tackle right there. First down markers all the way here. You're looking at a third and nine, third and ten, if he makes that tackle. Keep in mind, it was 24 to nothing. You score 14 unanswered on defense to get yourself back in the game. And it's the first series to start the second half. Missed tackle ends up costing him. Charles Nelson going to try the return. They've been touched back all day, and Nelson's a dangerous guy, but only able to get it across the 20. Capital One Bowl Mania continues tonight on ESPN, Middle Tennessee and Arkansas State. The Raycom Media Camellia Bowl from Montgomery, Alabama. 8 Eastern, 5 on the West Coast. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. Andy Avalos and this defense in the first half, they put together a game plan of stopping Herbert Defending the pass and space, defending the physicality of the Oregon run game, led by Vanderbilt and Vander Esch in the middle of this, and just could not have played any better. Herbert out to Tony Brooks James. James has the great speed. He is all down, slung out of bounds by Leighton Vander Esch. If you just tuned into this game and you see 31 to 14, you're thinking, oh, Oregon's got on the board. They scored the two defensive touchdowns. We're still waiting for them to cross midfield. They've not crossed the 50-yard line in the first half. Back to the ground, knocked down at the 30. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Yeah, when you run this offense and you spread, it's kind of like a Baylor with Art Bryles or a, a mix of a little bit of Auburn and Clemson. They, they use formations to spread defenses all the way from sideline to sideline. And when you do that, you create openings in the running game. Backfield down, hit for a loss. Vanderish again, and that's just that's like the, the first drive of the game. Absolutely. That's the theory. That's the theory is you create these running lanes, but to be able to do that, you've got to win the line of scrimmage. You've got to be able to run the football. And when you when you when you're not able to control the line of scrimmage and you're letting the linebacker, who's a great player, Vanderish get into that backfield, you're just not going to be able to execute. It's three and out. Brooks James shaking up on the play. I referenced that first drive because yep. Oregon had a couple of positive plays. They yeah, had a third and short, and almost boom. the exact same thing happened. Yep. The offensive line from Oregon has struggled this game. Got whipped is what's happened. Yeah, you, you think about the size. Everybody says, okay, the Pac-12 against the Mountain West Conference. What an advantage for the big Power 5 schools. Look at that line of scrimmage. And, and, and they anticipated third and short, they're going to run up the middle. They shot the gaps. They outworked them, out-hustled them, and got in the backfield. Oregon had put up such impressive numbers when they had their starting quarterback. They had struggled mightily on offense without Justin Herbert and even without Royce Freeman today when Herbert was hurt Freeman didn't score a single touchdown so Herbert seemed to be the guy who's 
the most important, but he hasn't been able to get things started. Avery Williams trying to find some running room. This is going to come back for an illegal block as they have a duck player this down. And that was good to see Tanner Carew up after taking that hit. During the return, personal foul, illegal block below the waist, receiving team number 15. 15 yard penalty, first down. The Boise State will back it up 15, but the Broncos have the ball back. Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup is at the Las Vegas Bowl. Here today, it's awarded to the conference that has the highest winning percentage in postseason play. You take a look at the Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup on the field, you can see the standings based since 2002. It's all based on winning percentage in the Mountain West has won this thing four times and are off to a really good start here with Boise State. Colorado State's playing Marshall in the Mexico Bowl right now. So the Mountain West hoping to get a win on the border too, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And you know, watching it, what are we, two and a half quarters into this yep. game, Oregon looks like one of those fans that sits out there and says there's, yeah, there's just too many bowl games. I don't, I'm not going to watch these bowl games. I, and Boise represents the fan that's like, wow, there's a bowl game on. Awesome. Wow, I'm going to watch that. that. That's what that's what these two teams right now remind me of. So, so green, green is representing the fan that's like Debbie Downer and doesn't yeah. want to watch the, too many bowl games. I can't stand them. Yeah. And Blue is representing, I don't care what bowl game's on, I'm watching every game. Blue, blue represents you, me, and the bear. <laughs> exactly. Us. If it's all we're who's watching. On, who's on? <laughs> Until Cozart's in. He throws it into traffic. Looking for Damon to just had a touchdown a minute. Now, Boise State, remember, they had to play Fresno State. In consecutive weeks, Wolfman going in for what turned out to be the winning touchdown. I should play. But this was... A great play by Vanderesh on the interception. It looked from that angle like it was easy. You see the end zone look at that. And look, all you, talk, all you want to talk about is who's in the playoff. Here's, here's Boise State winning the Mountain West Conference and acting like they won the national championship. Sometimes those things get overlooked in the sport of college football. But remember, Fresno State had beaten them the week before, deflected, and Oregon had a shot at an interception on third down. But Fresno State had beaten them. Yeah. And just by a hair after that win, it allowed Boise State to play the championship game the following week on their home blue turf. And Fresno pushed them to the end. On the subject of coaches, what a job Jeff Tedford did at Fresno State. Yeah, without a doubt. Jeff Tedford, who turnaround. worked with Marcus Arroyo, who's offensive coordinator now for the Ducks. This is going to be the best field position the entire game for Oregon's offense. As he kicks it to the other end of the stadium, but you almost <laughs> have, and no so return at all. That hang time was 4.74, and now things are getting a little testy, and the laundry comes flying out. If that ends up going against Boise, uh, Brian Harson's going to have a few words for some of those players. That was a tremendous punt by Joel Velasquez with the great hang time. It's great coverage. Guys are downfield. You mentioned the punt. Great hang time. Got the players down. Brock Barr making the tackle and a 51-yard punt. Negative one on the return. Here's the call. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against Boise number 89. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's number 89's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Well, now look, they're going to call that 15 yards, but let's call it 14 because he made such a great play. It was a negative one return. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so we'll, yeah, yeah, but still, I mean, I know, I know. You, got a, you got a chance there to be able to keep Oregon an offense that's struggling back a little bit deeper in their own territory. Now, it, we talked about this being the best field position to start a drive. I mean, they're, they're at their own 44. They've averaged tonight. They're about their own 30. Let's see what Herbert can do with this. Ducks still trying with their first snap in Boise territory. Six yards away from the Hallelujah Land, and now maybe seven or eight. They got, they've got some speed up front. 
Benoit just got knocked down. That was Chase Atata. Atata can move up front. Look at him close down from the backside. I mean, Benoit's thinking about play side, and the speed from the backside ends up blowing that play up. Herbert throws it out, and there it is. Oregon is into Boise State territory. The catch by Johnny Johnson, the now, freshman. Now you want to see tempo. I mean, you get a first down, you're in Boise, uh, Boise State territory. When Oregon is really going, if you go back and watch Herbert, when they're averaging 50 a game, they get their tempo going and they get a defense confused by the tempo and the different looks. Herbert puts it right on Breland. Jacob Breland slipping tackles and fighting ahead. There's that accuracy from Herbert. We haven't seen a lot of it tonight, but even on the move, it's 6'6", 225 pounds. Nice play action fake. Puts that just beyond the defender's stretched hand. Five receivers, and he did not get the man blocked, and Jalen Walker came roaring up there to make the tackle. Second and short run pass option, which means he can run the ball, or he can flip it to the outside if he thinks he can win on the outside real quick. How about Boise's defense, though, taking that away? Third down from inside the 40. Look at, the, look at the nice cushion on third and short on the inside receiver. And now they take it away. Herbert yep. Mitchell picks his way. First down. Down to the 30-yard line, drive stays alive for the Ducks. So for all of their struggles, get a touchdown here, down 10. Yeah, think we're all seeing that same thing. Look at the cushion on third and short. Instead of going to Nelson on the inside, he switches it up to Mitchell. Mitchell comes back to the ball, and then he picks up the block from Nelson and gets that first down. Now they're at the 30-yard line. Here comes the blitz now, right here. Herbert going for the end zone. It is too far for Brendan Schooler. And when, they, when they're really going, they stretch you horizontally. They get you thinking about either, either a quick throw to the outside or a quick run to the outside. Formations get you thinking outside, and then they can take shots downfield. I mean, that, and, and then they run the football, typically in the past, of course, with Royce Freeman. He's elected not to play, so it's been Benoit mainly today. Trying to go Brooks James with the speed stuff, and there is Brooks James struggling inside the 25, and now flag coming in. It looked as if he might have tossed the ball that way, and that is the last thing Oregon needs. Wanted to get up. It was kind of holding on there late. Yeah, and just can't. You know, just complete lack of discipline. Hurt your team. Understand you're frustrated. You can't do that. You said they're most penalized team? Or in the country. In the country. Yeah. Penalties and by yards. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Oregon, number 20. 15 yard penalty. The down counts. Third down. That's number 20's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. I think he's frustrated with he's holding on to his ankle, and that's why he ended up throwing the ball at him. And I, I get that. I get being frustrated, but you got to be able to draw the line somewhere there emotionally. You can't, you can't lose your cool and cost your team 15 yards. So now all of a sudden, those 15 yards after the play, now it's way back at third and 19. You probably get away with a shoulder bump, but you throw the ball. Everybody there to see, especially the officials. Herbert pressured, tackled, fourth and long. More pressure coming this time from Curtis Weaver, who's been a tremendous story himself. This dude lost 50 pounds and has become one of the more dynamic players in the Mountain West. Think about that now. You're talking about a guy who was 300 pounds, and he's now down to 250, where he can use quickness. Instead of size and power, now he goes around right the right tackle because of that quickness. And that's great to see a guy commit himself to saying, okay, came in as a freshman, 300 pounds, used the entire freshman year when he redshirted to lose that weight and became a force on this defense where he ended up with nine sacks, now 10 sacks on the year. Led the Mountain West, Kirk, didn't start a game. Didn't start a game. Excellent bounce on the punt. Great coverage by the Ducks. So Boise State will have it on the one. There's Ty Griffin down there on the coverage 
for Oregon and making the good play on special teams. Well, tonight, after the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl, all over on ESPN, Sports Center comes your way right in the neighborhood of 11:30 Eastern Time. The impact of the Chiefs and Chargers at Saturday night showdown on the playoffs. Memo returns to New York. Be able to hear from him on his team on his return to his old stomping grounds in the top 10 plays of college football season. 11:30 Eastern for ESPN. It's always available on the ESPN app. They marked it on the three. Rippon operating out of his end zone. Get some time, firing deep, and there's going to be a flag come flying out right there. Another penalty is Richardson was being covered by Thomas Graham. Graham couldn't find the ball and just wrapped up his man. And Brett Rippon having time. How about Brian Pass Harson and Defense Zach Hill, even four. though they're pinned back inside their own five automatic with a lead of 17 points. They come out throwing downfield and Graham again never saw the football and when you never see the football and your head's kind of spinning Where's the ball and you're trying to adjust to the receiver and where the ball might be thrown and you're holding on to that receiver It's pass interference. So Graham who's played pretty well today that time gets caught and gets Boise out of being Pinned back so close to their goal line. He's a true freshman too with a very bright future and over the middle It's incomplete looking for CT Thomas. Yeah, that went right through the hands the freshman is a small target at 5'8", 152 pounds. Went right through his hands. Good throw by Rippon. Rippon closing in on a 300-yard passing day. He has 286 on the passing yards so far. Second down and ten inside four minutes to play here in the third quarter. We'll toss to the edge and we'll open his chase down from behind. Not necessarily his strong suit. Jalen Jelks there to get it. Yeah, I, I love watching Jalen Jelks play because it's 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 just rare to see a guy who is this long line up as a defensive end at 6'6, 245 pounds in a 3-4 scheme. He, he's in there battling with big linemen, but has speed to be able to chase plays down like that. He's had a great year. He said he was going to watch the tape from this past season and see all the layups that he that he missed to put it in his term. He said it will be pleasant. We've got to watch him to get better. Got a bright future as well. Rippon getting out of there, but he can't get away. Hollins was the guy that got him. No jokes was there for the JOP jump on the pile. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when we saw Hollins go out, he's just gutting through this, playing with a lot of heart, 11 and green. He is... A young man that went out it looked like we didn't know if he would be able to come back missed a couple series but is back out on the field just playing with a lot of guts especially on third down is when they need him to rush the quarterback Quinn Skillen punted away for Boise State Dylan Mitchell's waiting at his 40 the left footer puts one up there Mitchell calls for the fair catch and makes it Straddling his own 35-yard line, under two and a half to play here in the third quarter as we check in with Bob. Well, Reese, Leighton Vander Esch just gathered his defense together and told them to keep their emotions in check. He said, look what their emotions are doing to them. Let them penalize us. You can't get up, caught up in that extra stuff. And Vander Esch is a really quiet leader. He only speaks up when he needs to, you guys. Well, Molly, he's had a sensational, sensational game. He's been everywhere, just as we expected coming in. And you knew you, this guy would come in and just play, be a great leader. But when you see him in person, the thing that really jumps out is for as big and athletic as he is, is how quick he's able to diagnose a play and able to get into the backfield. When they run the ball, that those linemen up front protect him and keep him clean. Eight of his nine tackles have been the sole variety of category in which he ranks in the top five in the country. Darian Felix, a freshman running back that they're high on. It's a good gain on first down. Molly, how, how does the Leighton Van Der Esch family travel around? Well, it's funny you ask. His dad, Darwin, bought a bus a year ago, and the entire family takes this to every single game, home or away. About 30 people boarded this bus from their small tome, hometown of Riggins, Go Idaho. Broncos! Made the 13-hour journey. That's Darwin right there. Leighton told me this is an old Disneyland bus. His dad repainted it, gutted it, refurbished it. You can tell the inside is tricked out. It's pretty cool. And right on cue for you, Molly, Leighton makes a... Another tackle and puts him into double figures for the day. That one too solo. Looks like he might have banged up a hand there or something on that one, but 
Put a little tape on yeah. it. He'll be fine. Yeah, he'll tape I would say, a couple fingers together. I was going to say, rub some dirt on it. He'll rub yeah. some of the field turf pellets on it. Remember, third down has been an issue. Third and short has been a real problem for Oregon. Boise State will shoot those gaps. So yeah, instead, of, yeah, instead yeah. of running, they decide to get away from that, that pressure. Roll to his left, and Brendan Schooler made the catch. Let's take a look at it. It's getting a little testy in there. Everybody knows about the LeGarrette Ooh. blunt punch. Ooh. There had a couple, a couple of punches. Mitchell took one and then gave one to Avery Williams, who wasn't even involved. And neither one of those were called, by the way. Everybody had on headgears. Those weren't exactly UFC punches. Or no, anything. no, but usually official sees that. any attempt at all to swing at another player. That, that's that's 15 yeah, yards. Unable to run the ball. Just amazed at the line of scrimmage. Oregon 39 yards running. And I know the game started to get away from them. They started to throw. But they have get, gotten whipped up front. A tackle in the open field. Benoit making the catch. Avery Williams, who took that punch a minute ago, delivers a shot of his own. Yeah, Boise continues with Andy Avalos playing very, very focused, disciplined football, whether the run or the pass. Oregon, they, they've tried to run with those 22 attempts, but and when this offense can't run the ball, there's so much of play action off of it. It's, it could be for in, it could be in for a long day, and that's what we've seen. Final seconds of the third quarter. Herbert firing and knocked down. See, Jordan Happel had a pick earlier, makes him another good play. A, that's a great example of just knowing the down and the distance and kind of anticipating a route on third and seven or eight that the route's going to be about eight or nine yards. So instead of being worried about going downfield, you cheat up a little bit and you're able to be in position. So when he turns at that eight or nine yard mark, you're already coming forward and you're able to get your arm around and knock that ball away. That's just little things that go a long way in playing defensive back. Adam Stack punted away again for the Ducks. Clock's going to hit zero here in the third quarter. Williams, pretty good decoy to let the ball bounce into the end zone, and the third quarter comes to an end. Boise State in control, 31 to 14 over Oregon. The Las Vegas Bowl on ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fourth quarter about to start here in Las Vegas. Mario Cristobal imploring his team to finish down 17 as we start the final period. Well, this is his last, or this is his first speech to his new team to start a fourth quarter. He, they just happened to be down side by 17, but he left the program in Alabama with Nick Saban and S Scott Cochran. They prided themselves on the fourth quarter, and it's, I'm sure, ingrained in him. So he's trying to make sure his team understands what this fourth quarter needs to be about. First play of the fourth quarter is Robert Mahone, the red shirt freshman carrying. Let's look at today's keys to the game brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage Company. And for me, Boise State, just keep doing what you've been doing for three quarters. Finish strong, playing incredibly well on both sides, other than the turnovers late in the first half. Oregon, how will they finish? under their new head coach. It's not just about tonight in the Las Vegas Bowl. This is about setting a tone for an off season and leading into 2018. On second down, ripping across the middle. Nice grab. And Molly, what's going on on the Boise sideline? Well, the message here is this is our last quarter of football in a long time. You don't want that bad taste in your mouth again, obviously referring to last year's bowl loss. That's one thing that Brian Harson has been harping with his team all week. Molly, I called that game last year in the Cactus Bowl, Boise State against Baylor, and it was a very un-Boise-like performance. Baylor ripped through them, and it's been a little bit of a sticking point, really. The Broncos, including that game, had lost their previous three games against Power 5 opponents as a power run. We'll pick up the first down from Ryan Wolpen. But Harson, by tonight, is going to be back in Boise, and he's going to be recruiting. And he didn't make any bones about the fact that he felt as if this game 
for anybody sitting on the fence worrying about about Boise, if they could perform well, it could help them in recruiting, especially with that early signing period. Absolutely. A big opportunity to be on this stage against a Power 5 school. And up to this point, they have taken full advantage of that oh, and now oh, into the fourth oh, quarter. Should be said about Boise State's offense this year. Remember, they had a bunch of new faces around oh, Brett Rippon and, and Cedric Wilson. A lot of these other guys are... are haven't really played a ton of football. Worst rushing performance as a team since going all the way back to 1993, where they averaged 98 yards a game. 1993. So since they've been FBS, the Boise that we all know now nationally, and so for them to come all the way through that, and you can see today, I mean, they're, they, they like to throw the ball, but they're better now at running the ball than they were early in the year. Rip and reloads, gets outside the pocket, and throws it away. Now this is a, a, a young team that Brian Harson somehow he got this team to be able to get to a Mountain West Conference championship. They bring most of this entire team back. Pretty balanced play calling by Harson and Zach Hill today. The production much bigger, clearly through the air. Oregon's been a really good rush defense for the most part this year. Stanford got after them pretty good with Bryce Love, but they, they did a really good job against Khalil Tate in Arizona. And today it's been through the air. They take care of that flip to the running back in very short order. Mahone had it, and Jelks was there almost as soon as he caught the ball. Yep, pressure got in, but Jelks, I think, anticipated, kind of felt that coming the whole time. Play never really had a chance. But it keeps the clock moving. Nothing dreadful happened, as Boise had happened a couple of times at the end of the first half. If you didn't see the 14 Oregon has on the board, all courtesy of its defense. 86-yard fumble return on a botched Statue of Liberty play and a 100-yard interception all within a 30-second span right at the end of the first half. Maybe special teams could help out the Ducks here. He's Dylan Mitchell has a nice return up to about the 22. That's where the Ducks will be in business when you come back to Las Vegas. I'm about to hit the Vegas Strip in a three-wheeled auto cycle. This is a Polaris slingshot, and Kirk's going to take me for a ride. a bad way to explore the Las Vegas Strip, that's for sure. Thanks so much to Kurt at Adrenaline Rush Slingshot. I was able to hear, smell, and see all the sights of Las Vegas. That was the best way to experience it all in one sitting, and I felt like I was in the Batmobile, guys. Are you going to get yourself one of those, Molly, for home? <laughs> Let's talk to our bosses about a little pay raise for that, guys. <laughs> Justin Herbert slingshots out to the edge and scampers out close to the 40, but there's a flag down. Adam Savoy has been busy. A lot of penalties on Apple Green today. Holding defense number 15, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Well, this one goes against the Broncos. A positive start to this drive for Oregon. Look, Oregon's offense has performed poorly, largely because Boise State's defense has performed so well. But there's still a lot of time yeah, left 11, in this game. 11.47, obviously not only trying to get back from 17, but the clock as well. Wise sweep. There's the freshman Jalen Red. You know, tempo is is a big part of their offense. So there, there should be a comfort level and getting lined up and, and getting able to get the ball snapped quickly. Big thing you want to see your receivers. They got to win some one on one battles to give Herbert a chance. Herbert looking, firing to the outside. Mitchell has it. He shakes off one guy or he's dragged out of bounds. It'll be a first down for the Ducks. Yeah, he had Jalen Red there on a quick slant number 30, wide open. I think he was locked in to, to Mitchell and give Mitchell a lot of credit after the catch, making making the defender miss and picking up first down. 
Well, Mitchell and Cedric Wilson from the same high school, White Station in Memphis, Tennessee. As Ben Wong gets inside the 35. I think it's important for, for Boise Reese. You know, it's a little bit of a different mindset when you're up by 17 and you're in the fourth quarter. But you don't want to you don't want to lose what has allowed you to dominate the game. It's one thing to be smart and keep everything in front. But you don't want to lose your aggressiveness, which has been such a big part of their, their performance today. Mitchell has it again. Blocker out in front of him. McCormick got a body on one guy to help him out. Boise State able to stop it before too big a game. Kekoa Nawahine on the tackle. A third down and short. Herbert. Oh, and dropped. Had the first down, potentially a touchdown, and it was Cam McCormick who just couldn't hang on to it. That's the second time we've seen him with a chance to make a big play, and he, and he drops the ball. This is kind of Oregon. When you think of Herbert, you think of those seam routes. You think of him throwing the ball perfectly in stride to a receiver or a tight end and getting big chunks of yards, and that time the freshman tight end unable to hold on to it. A costly drop. Ducks need a yard. This has been a problem earlier today. Again, they'll roll Herbert. He's in trouble. He gets away. Can he get to the stick? He does, but barely. Just barely getting the first down. Vander Esch is all over. Maeva almost got him short, and he's got good speed for an undersized linebacker. And then Vander Esch, the other linebacker, eventually chases him down. He got to him, and he thought, Wow, you're big. 6'6", 225. Herbert to the end zone again. Touchdown, Brendan Schooler. The former defensive back turned back wide receiver. Takes a touchdown grab him with the extra point. It's going to be a 10-point game. Yeah, it's a nice drive by Herbert in Oregon. Seven plays, 78 yards, under two minutes, most importantly. You can see Boise State brought pressure. They brought the blitz. One of the few times we've seen the secondary out of position, Avery Williams, the freshman, goes to the inside and leaves Schooler all alone to the corner of the end zone. Third touchdown catch of the season for Schooler. Extra point is true, and just over 10 minutes to play, we have a 10-point game. Will we have a finish? Oh, Oregon's ready to roll the dice. Try to give him a run in Vegas. The Las Vegas Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. So much to visit on that world-famous Las Vegas Strip. And when you come to the Las Vegas Bowl, it's just a few miles out of town here. They bring a lot of that entertainment to you during the breaks. Uh, they have entertainment on stage down there with it's Cirque du Soleil type acts or the king of rock and roll. They're just singing Viva Las Vegas. Up here, Herbie was singing along. <laughs> you an Elvis fan, Herbie? Oh, yeah. Early Elvis. Okay. How about you? You're all Absolutely. over Absolutely. You're all over Oh, it. yeah, for sure. You know, every, I think you know every song. I know most of them. I do. That is true. And Boise State let it bounce into the end zone. They'll take it out to the 25, and the Broncos have let this thing get back into 10 points. Pac-12 playing here. What about some other Pac-12 bowl games coming up on ESPN, Herbie? Yeah, I, I like to watch the UCLA-Kansas State game. You know, you and I, we talked about being uh, kind of a mindset of we like them all. TCU-Stanford will be a good one. And on the bottom, I mean, it doesn't get much better than seeing Ohio State-USC as far as name brand. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you know, wonder if Josh Rosen, will he end up playing uh, in that game against Kansas State? And Saquon Barkley in Washington, that should be a fun one, too. Hopefully everybody participates in their bowl games. I hope so. David Pollock, Joey Galloway, and I will have that Valero Alamo oh, Bowl with TCU and Stanford. That'll be fun, the runners-up in their respective conferences. And now you have an incomplete pass on first down. You have a 10-point game right at 10 minutes left to play. If Oregon could get a quick stop here and get the ball back. We, we said at the break, you yeah. imagine if Oregon gets a three and out. And I wondered how Boise State with Zach, Zach Hill and Brian Harson would approach this series. Would they be a little bit more conservative, trying to continue to work that clock, or would they 
continue to kind of stick to their guns and throw the football and, and be who they are. First play, pass attempt, and as you said, incompletion stops the clock. Pressure coming, they handle it, throw it up top, and it bounces off the headgear of a defender. A good play there by Arian Springs. Yeah. Using his noggin to knock it away. In great position. Wasn't able to really see the ball until it hit him in the helmet, but because he was in phase, meaning stride for stride with the receiver, because of that, he's able to defend the ball with his helmet. He was in such good position. Big third down for the Oregon defense. I don't want to make too big a deal of it, but two plays, 11 seconds. That's all that's ticked off the clock. Down goes Rippin. Justin Hollins with the sack, and the Broncos will have to give it up. It's the second time since his injury he's come up with a sack. He's right here, and this is a freshman going up against him. And, and Ezra Cleveland's going to be a great player for Boise. But that time, the hands of Justin Hollins and the quickness allows him to disengage from Cleveland, get away from him, and then close in on Brett Rippin. When Skillen could use a really big punt here for the Broncos and flip this field. Mitchell's waiting across his own 40. He'll signal for the fair catch right at the 42. Four straight possessions with a punt for Boise State. Oregon can get to within one possession. Welcome back to the 2017 Las Vegas Bowl. It is part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Nine minutes and 12 seconds to go here. Boise State up by 10 on Oregon. Looked as if the Ducks were about to go bust, but now the cards seem to be turning in favor of Oregon. Oregon has it back on their own 42. Plenty of time to go. Royce Freeman standing on the sidelines, choosing not to play to protect his pro draft stock. Haven't had a great offensive day, fewest yards since Chip Kelly's first game, a loss on the blue to Boise State. But now Justin Herbert trying to rally his team. Tony Brooks James, a speedster, is into Boise territory and he has a first down. That's a great effort there by Brooks James. Little check down there by Herbert. He's got receivers going downfield. He's got four verticals way downfield. He comes off instead of getting greedy, checks it down and lets him do his magic after the catch. Herbert slings it to the outside. It's caught by Mitchell. Got a long throw. Look dangerous just, for a second. Oregon isn't it? just feels like they are in, in a much more aggressive state of mind and a little bit more positive energy coming off of them right now than where they've been the entire game. Herbert firing for Mitchell toward the end zone. There was some contact with Avery Williams. The Boise contingent hoping for a flag. You know, Mario Cristobal is out there. They're sending him back to the sideline. Okay. It's a little push there at the end, but not enough to call interference. Going after Avery Williams at 5-9. They leave him on an island there with a game on the line. Good time to take a shot because you think yep. you're probably in four down territory sure. here inside the four. It's third and short now. Yeah, his center was late on the snap. Everybody moved except the center. The entire offense started to run their play and they were just waiting on the ball to get snapped. Ball Watch start. the snap. Everyone offense, moves. Number 66, five yard penalty. And he snaps it. Third down. Jake Hansen just to, I don't know if he's thinking about the call or getting everybody aligned, but he just. Just, just missed it. It's the ninth penalty of the day against the Ducks, and it turned that third and short into third and much more difficult. Remember, Curtis Weaver on these third downs, a lot of times, is the guy who can get in after the quarterback. They're showing pressure, and here come guys. They pick it up for a moment, but not long enough. It was Weaver. It moved him from the outside to the inside. I, when I circled him, I was thinking about him coming around the edge. But instead, they move him inside in a little stunt move. Lyman, he gets right through them. See, we talk about him losing weight and getting quick, but he still has that power at the time he shot right through two, two offensive linemen. 
we've, been, we've been bragging on the Oregon defense all game long about keeping them in this game. That time, Boise steps up at a cr critical moment in this game to get him off the field. From third and two, likely four downs to get that first down to fourth and 17 and being forced to punt it away. Excellent job by the Boise State defense. So now, getting close to the midway point of the fourth quarter and see if Boise State can run some clock. Right, and the last time they had the ball, it was three throws, right? Didn't, they didn't work any clock at all. Now 741, and it's getting a little bit more real now. Oregon trying to be a threat to come back and tie this game or win it. Now we'll see if Brian Harson and Zach Hill, as you say, work a little bit of clock here. And Herbert, too, sort of wanted to get rid of the ball on that last throw, but Weaver hit him quickly, just as Wolpen is hit in the backfield by Jelks quickly. Oregon needs to force this three and out and try to get it back as quickly as possible. Ducks only have two timeouts. have already burned one here in the second half. You, you talked about the four straight possessions for Boise and the four straight punts that we've seen. And again, a lot of credit to Jim Levitt and this Oregon defense. But when you go back and watch this film, if you watch this game, Oregon at one point could have been down by 31, 34 points. But backed up deep in the, their own territory time after time, Oregon made just enough plays on this side of the ball to give them a chance to come back and win. Open. A short game to bring up third down and long. Their own offense wasn't doing anything. And even before they scored those two, the two defensive touchdowns, they made enough plays to be able to stay within striking distance. The Oregon offense still has just over 200 total yards, responsible yeah. for only one of the touchdowns. There is Jim Levitt. His future is in some question. He, when we asked him about it this week, about whether he would join Willie Taggart at Florida State or what he planned, he said his focus was just on this right now. So his Which means decision is <laughs> uncertain at the moment. At least... Uh, that's a huge first down and a completion to the young receiver, C.T. Thomas. Which usually means a coach is gone when he says, I'm focused on just this game. Uh, good job by the offensive line giving him time. He doesn't panic. He almost checked it down to his back wool pin. But instead, that's the experience of a quarterback, a three-year guy that's been around. He's about to check it down. Think about it. He's back there three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. A lot of guys want to bail and take off. Instead, he waits to eventually find the freshman Thomas, who's just sitting there in the zone in a soft spot. And they pick up a huge first down to work more clock. 14th career 300 yard game for Brett Rippon. Picked up 22 on third and nine. We'll open with a short game as we check in with Kevin Nagandi. Reese, let's take a look at some other games going on on ESPN. Gilded New Mexico Bowl tied up Marshall and Colorado State, and Keon Davis getting the call for the Thundering Herd, out racing and out muscling. Colorado State, get off me. The touchdown there. Right now, that's the difference early parts of the second half. Back to you guys. See a couple junkies like us. We'll go watch that second half when we get done here. <laughs> yeah, well, we will. The kid looked like a rolling bowling ball of butcher knives there. Cutting through another strong run from Boise State. Robert Mahone. And now Boise State starting to put a chokehold on this game as we head down toward the five minute mark once the clock winds and it does after the change are set on the first down puts a lot on an offensive line when you're in this mode you know you're, you're getting it under five minutes you got a 10 point lead Oregon knows you're gonna run the ball everybody in the stadium knows you're gonna run the ball and to be able to still be able to get some positive yards and pick up first downs really on the backs of those offensive linemen Mahone stays in the game at running back for Boise. The pistol look. Mahone hit in the backfield. Initially, Lamar Winston was the first guy there and had helped to get him down. Mario Cristobal used his, his second timeout. Oregon needs a stop. They need it twice. Boise trying to finish it up. Up 10. Take a look at our Pacific Live game summary. Boise State 427 away from getting another Vegas Bowl win. 
What a, what a quick start for Boise State. They had a 24 to nothing lead on their way to 31. And whoa, put the brakes on it. Oregon scores too late. Defensive touchdowns at the end of the first half to make it a 24-14 game. And we thought we might have a interesting second half. And Oregon got it close. I mean, they're still within 10. But it has been a big drive right here for Boise State to try to put the game away. By uh, Rippon showing a little bit of the running ability to keep the clock yeah, moving and the last timeout call by the Ducks. You, know, you always wonder about strategy when you have two timeouts. How do you how do you how are you going to end up using those last two timeouts? Do you try to get a stop, you know, and hold on to them or do you use them? And he's elected to use them. They're out of timeouts and puts everything on this this drive right here, this this play, really. Okay, assuming that Boise State's able to hang on for the last four minutes and change here and they get the win, seems to me that they've really set the table to be the team to watch from outside the Power Five next year. They've got a great opportunity to to make some of those runs we've seen in years past. Yeah, I mean, next year, if, if you, that's why I think people sometimes underestimate. You play in a bowl game like this and you win against, you know, against a team like Oregon, builds a little bit of momentum and awareness for next year. You play Oklahoma, you play Troy first, and you play Oklahoma State on the road in Stillwater. That's when you're, a, when you're a group of five and you wonder, why don't we get more respect? That's how you do it. UCF this year. Imagine if they had a chance to play Oklahoma State in the non-conference, what that could do for them. UCF was trying to play Georgia Tech. A game called off because of the hurricane. Rippon throwing deep and lays it right in there to Wilson again. Let me tell you something. Those two, they they are, it's like a telepathic connection on that route and that throw. Yeah, they've done well, it. They've done it all day. They've done it throughout the last few years. But you, you, you maybe haven't seen a ton of Cedric Wilson. It's a shame because he's one of the top receivers in the country. A tall guy at 6'3". Body control, this is about the ball. The placement of the ball away to the outside shoulder, away from the defender, perfectly placed over the receiver's shoulder and Wilson. And you're right, the relationship is very evident between Rippon and Cedric Wilson. 221 yards receiving for Cedric Wilson. They wanted to get him the ball, and boy, have they. Wolpen, Wolpen, headed down close to the goal line. Did they stop him just short? I think they did. He rolled into the end zone and have another half yard to go. Ducks out of timeouts. Oregon's defense been making big play. He's down. He's short. Ball is just short. Just a hair. Yeah. They, they, they. <laughs> well, that's Very right. give, give it back to him, right? I, they put the ball at the one. If anything, it looks like it's about maybe the four inch. Line. I would say they might have shorted him three quarters of a yard there. Might not matter. Second and goal. And Wolpen is stopped short. Stop short of the goal line. But Boise State's best friend is that clock, and it keeps winding down now under three minutes to go. So Boise State about to move to 4-0 in the Vegas Bowl all time, and perhaps even more impressively, 4-1 against opponents who we're in Pac-12 at the time in postseason play. Ducks fans exhorting that defense, show a little pride, which they certainly have all day. Look at the, there's the pirouette. Oh, move. now we're going oh, to right. a pirouette and a couple of dance steps. They scored off that pirouette move earlier, and there's the knockout punch. Wolpen goes in. Yabba dabba do, I guess, for Boise's Fred Flintstone and Wolpen, the fifth year senior tough guy with Alexander Madison still nursing that ankle, has been a workhorse today, getting yeah. the tough yards while Wilson has made the explosive plays on the outside at receiver. Just an impressive performance by Boise coming into this bowl game. You always wonder about incentive and who might be fired up and who, who might not be. Boise State, the execution on offense, the deep ball. I mean, Rippon, think about his journey that he's been through this year. At one point, bench, you know, it looked like he wouldn't be able to have the same kind of year and ends up fighting through that adversity. He has a, a very solid year and very fitting for him to go out as it, this year, anyway. Yeah, as a that. junior, 362 yards through the air, a couple scores. Cedric Wilson, that you mentioned, at 221 yards through the air, just receiving. So just a great job by their offense, but also uh, 
Their defense put it on all day long. Is this, this ready for Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> Are they in sync enough in yeah, step? Yeah, I thought that was good. Choreography is excellent. Put them up on the stage. <laughs> and here's the one earlier in which they Wolpen scored a touchdown. They, yeah. was, this was the first touchdown of the game. Backwards pass and a run. That got Boise started. They were the aggressor for most of the day. Oregon showed some heart, particularly on defense. And I don't want to make excuses for the Ducks. You have to show up and play. But they've been through a lot. I mean, with the, with the coaching changes over the last calendar year, not just with Willie Taggart leaving, but also with the firing of Mark Helfrich last year. Charles Nelson on the return. Nelson's Charles Nelson had a varied career. Senior out of Daytona Beach. Only taking one class is a martial arts class this year and Nelson's played a little offense and a little bit of defense Here's what we were alluding to with all the coaching changes when Jimbo Fisher moved from Florida State to Texas A&M It really created the opening that Willie Taggart had coveted for much of his career an opportunity to go back to the state of Florida with Florida State and on December 5th He was named Seminoles head coach that left after just one year the opening at Oregon the players rallied got a petition took it to the athletic director Rob Mullins and Mario Cristobal was named head coach. Not the way Mario wanted to start, for sure. But the real start of the Cristobal era will be in the offseason, how that work goes and how the Ducks respond, what types of changes might be made as a result of this. Herbert throwing it deep, and Mitchell makes the catch. It looked back like he was looking for somebody to come chase him, but he gets down inside the 10. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing there. I didn't, he was waiting for a... A block or what he might be or a friend to lateral it to or something. Yeah, but Jalen Walker Again leaving these corners on islands with the lead and it looked it looked like Mitchell may have run out of bounds I don't know if he was, he was pushed close, out of bounds, he? but he was very close to going out of bounds Pick up of 67 Herbert back shoulder And complete And Mitchell's a good-looking young receiver and he's having Having a little trouble getting to his feet. Mitchell's over 100 yards receiving himself today with eight catches. He had possession of it, and the ball comes out. There's a little bobble right there. And he ends up getting it, but yep. he's, by then he's out of bounds. Feet were off the ground. This is this is what I was talking about. Did he run out of bounds without being pushed? Yeah. He's out of bounds there. I don't know if you consider his right hand is touching him. I don't know if you think he's pushing him out of bounds. Yeah, if you're forced out of bounds and come back in immediately, you're still eligible. But if you just run out of bounds, then I, yeah, that, I think if they would seen that one, they would have called it back just to be candid about it. Charles Nelson going to the edge. Pretty I'm fitting here with the stop. Pretty fitting here that, as Andy Avalos told us, to leverage on those outside runs is so important. Charles Nelson, one of their go-to guys, has to step out, but they're able to get out there and try to keep them from getting outflanked and into the end zone. Herbert steps away from pressure, throws to the back of the end zone. And this time he did go out of the back of the end zone, so that's not going to count. And there's Johnny Johnson who caught him. See the official's hat down. And assuming they don't get together and talk it over and say that he was forced out, and that will not be a touchdown. Illegal touching, offense number 80. Went out of bounds, came back in bounds, and was the first to touch the ball. Ball be placed at the previous spot. Fourth down. Yeah, Herbert looks like he wants to run at the last second sees Johnson break free. The right foot's out of bounds. I think he just lost sight of where he was and maybe the awareness of that back line. I just like the fact that Oregon's fighting for a new coach. They, they haven't gone away. They, they keep competing. Herbert firing to the end zone and this time it is Johnson with the catch. Or no, check that. That is 30 red with the catch, and he got it over the goal line for the score for the Ducks. Jalen Red, impressive young player for Cristobal. See, I mean, if you're Mario Cristobal, you probably, odds are you aren't going to come back and win this game. 
but they, this team could have shut things down. And many of their fans have left. I mean, they could have emotionally shut down, but they've not at all. And they, they keep trying to get back last few possessions. They've done a much better job been able to get points on the board than anything they had previous to that. Red gets his first receiving touchdown back to a 10-point game, 112. So onside kick coming here for Cristobal's team. Now the Ducks, according to our ESPN recruiting staff, with a number 11 recruiting class on the first day of November before the coaching change. At one point, the Ducks are ranked as high as number five. Now all of these at this point are commits until the early signing period coming up next week for a few days and then of course the normal February period. And, and think about if you're if you're these two teams. I know that Brian Harson's flying back to Boise and doing some recruiting. This is a huge weekend with his early signing period. And Oregon had grand plans to have a lot of those verbal commitments on their campus and kind of seal the deal on a lot of those guys. And then they end up playing in the Vegas Bowl. And they lost that weekend. And it's so time out. Boise State. They're first. 30 seconds. Got to make sure they have this onside kick defended properly. And for Boise State, this was pretty much like a regular season and a bye week. We played the Mountain West Championship game and two weeks later here in, in the bowl game. A reminder that fans can tune into ESPN3 for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One that is immediately following the game on ESPN3. To the victor, the spoils, and it appears in a minute and 12 seconds that that baby will be headed to Boise, Idaho. A lot of success for the Broncos in this bowl. A lot of success for the Broncos in a lot of bowls. It's really a remarkable story in college football. The late 90s when they become uh, an FBS program and to have the level of success and to beat the teams they've beaten over the years on the big stages. Well, I think that's why they get that benefit. That's why they're known as that team. When Kellen Moore was at Boise State, they, they played Georgia in the Georgia Dome and beat them. They played a good Virginia Tech team in FedEx Field and beat them. And that, that's how you beat Oklahoma in a Fiesta Bowl. When you do those things, you get recognized and you get the benefit of the doubt of the group of five. These are the bowl wins against Power Five teams. And I should note that teams that were in Power Fives at the time of the bowl games that played TCU. TCU at that time was not in the Power Five. Obviously, they are now. And TCU and Boise State used to have, back before they, before TCU went into the Big 12, they had some knockdown, drag out games. This is going to be a really good Boise State team next year. They'll use this win. They'll go into the offseason. They'll finish off their recruiting. And they will be, most of these players are returning. They lose a handful. You know, most notably, I guess, the receiver, Cedric Wilson. But everybody else, a lot of them are back. And they, they will be that team you do not want to play. And they get Oklahoma State early in the year. And Cedric Wilson capping things off with a splendid performance. Wilson over 200 yards receiving. Scored a touchdown as Rippin takes a knee. The Capital One player of the game is Cedric Wilson from Boise State targeted him 13 times those 221 yards a career high and what a way to end it has been a terrific career for him and Boise State 13 seconds will officially have its 11th win of the season and Mario Cristobal will lose his debut as the Ducks full-time head coach 4-0 in the Las Vegas Bowl this is home away from home for the fellows from the blue is Wilson and the guys get the win. 38-28, Molly McGrath is with the head coach, Brian Harson. Thank you so much, Reese. Coach, you're still uh, drying off after that ice bath. I'll let you celebrate really quick with family. Oh, thank you. <laughs> A lot of injuries to your star offensive players, including yeah. Cedric Wilson, who made some key plays right. down the stretch. What did this game teach you about the toughness and resilience of your team? Well, it, it's, it's been that way all season long. It showed up again today. And, you know, against a really good Oregon team. I'm just proud of our guys. We had some adversity hit us. They fought back. Nobody flinched. And guys stepped up and made big plays. Even we had a few down. But this is what our team's been about this entire year. And our coaches just finishing, finding a way. And that's what we did today.
your defense didn't allow an offensive touchdown until the yeah. fourth quarter. What did that group do well? Well, yeah, we we, uh, we spotted them a few from our offense there. Tremendous, tremendous throughout the entire game. Uh, that's an explosive offense, but our defense played great. They have all season long and just proud of the way they came out here, the way they prepared themselves. Uh, it's been that way all year, and it was no different tonight. You lost your last three to Power 5 opponents. How important was this win in terms of the tradition of dominance that Boise State has? You know, it, it, the reason it was important is for these seniors and this team. Uh, there's a great vibe about this group. We're never going to be the same. 2017 is over now, but these guys deserve it. So it wasn't about any of that. It's about this group of guys that found a way to win a championship, win a bowl game, and finish the season like they started with that mindset at the beginning of the year. Congratulations on that, Coach. Go Broncos! Grace, back to you. And Molly, the Broncos did go an impressive performance against Oregon in a 38-28. That is our final score from Vegas. Remember, in live coverage in this game, the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. You can log on to ESPN3 for our entire ESPN ABC crew. Kirk Herbstreit, Molly McGrath, I'm Reese Davis saying so long from Las Vegas. champions the Boise State Broncos I'm here with coach Brian Harson yeah let's hear it <laughs> coach your team started the season two and two but they always kept their goals in sight that Mountain West championship and win a bowl game what have you learned about your team through this whole process well first of all they set their mind to doing something and they did it Team, the resiliency through the season, um, these seniors, their leadership, our coaches coming together every single game, every single week, trying to find a way to get it done, and, and that's what they did. They never flinched. It wasn't perfect. It's never going to be that way. I think they all understood that, but this group right here is special. They got a great vibe, uh, and this, this group right here deserves a championship, deserves a bowl game win. You saw it tonight. And Bronco Nation all here to support them. Uh, this is what it's all about. This is what being a Bronco is all about. That's right, Coach. I'm looking out. It's a sea of blue and orange here. How meaningful is the support and the fact that all of your fans traveled here for this one? It's tremendous. You know, this this logo means something. Uh, it's not just family on the football field in the in the uh, with our team. It's our entire Bronco Nation. We've been supporting this program for a long time. It was great to come out here to Vegas. They were fantastic to us, treated us first class to play a great team like Oregon, but to find a way to win. And we wouldn't do without these fans, certainly without our players and coaches. And this is what it's all about. One team, one heartbeat. We got a great fan base here and just excited for everybody. And uh, thank you to Vegas for such a great hospitality.